The emotions flow for senior stars on senior day. Part of a renaissance for SMU. From 0-11 as freshmen, a chance to go out with a winning season. Justin Lawler and Cortland Sutton, two of the 18 honored today. It's college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by the Home Depot. And the resurgent Tulane Green Wave invade the homestanding SMU Mustangs. The latest in the American, the title game set. UCF got the better of USF in the war on I-4. They'll battle Memphis, Houston, team Navy, and claim second in the West. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm John Sadak, alongside the former Vandy star and Corey Chavis. Tulane, a chance to be bowl eligible for the first time since 2013. SMU needs a win to have a winning regular season. Yeah, since 2013 for Tulane, that's back when Joe Montana's son was playing quarterback, John. And on the other side, I think SMU started off 6-2, and two, and the last three games have been a disappointment. So these two teams, really, we're going to find out in terms of a barometer game which team is the better one at this stage of the year. Now, those losses came against heavy hitters, but SMU has a big-time heavy hitter at wide receiver, Cortland Sutton. Well, a lot of people think he has an opportunity to be a first-round draft pick in next April's draft, and here's why. He can big boy defensive backs. He's six foot two. He's got about 33, 34 inch arms. And he's a guy that's electric outside the numbers. Watch out for him. Time for Do Project Smarter brought to you by the Home Depot. Big third down for Tulane against Houston. Well, I think SMU has to keep Jonathan Banks in the pocket. Here's an example, third down. They have no timeouts left, Houston. You get this first down and the game is over. He creates with his legs and makes it happen. Willie Fritz, the second-year head man. He's been a part of a lot of second-year turnarounds, a winner everywhere he's been. JUCO, Division II, FCS, upstart FBS, and now with Tulane. Chad Morris inherited a team that went 0-11 the regular season before his arrival. Last or next to last in scoring and yardage in America. They're now top 10 in both categories. SMU won the toss and won the ball. So Tulane will do the kicking duties. Zachary Block, the punter, also handles kickoffs. Tulane Green Wave, winners of back-to-back -back games, a thriller at ECU in overtime, and clipped Houston as Taryn Ancalon had himself a day last week. Ball in the air. And incredibly deep for a touchback as we check in with the third member of our crew, Melanie Collins, for more on the mentality of these teams. Thank you, John. Well, this is a huge game for Tulane as their bull hopes depend on it. And Coach Fritz said, hey, they're coming off two big wins, and it's normal for their guys to have an extra pep in their step after that. But they have a 24-hour gloat and pout rule, meaning if they come off a big win, they have 24 hours to gloat about it, and then they have to come in on Monday and be ready mentally. And that's what they did this week in, in preparation for this game against SMU. And then Chad Morris told us his guys are extra motivated for these seniors who will play their last game today. And they haven't won a game in November. But hey, the message is, in the past, we've been months and years away from where we want to be as a program. Where we stand right now, we are just plays away. And guys, they're already bowl eligible, so today is all about the seniors. Appreciate that, Melanie, and a lot of movement and a timeout called by Tulane. We don't even have a second off the clock yet, Corey <laughs> Chavis. Already a timeout. Out It'll be a 30-second timeout. Now you wonder sometimes when you want to use all your timeouts, John, before uh, in the first half, because a lot of people go into the half and they don't use all of them, but you don't want to use one before the first play from scrimmage. Let's take a look at what got Tulane to the edge of bowl eligibility. Overtime two weeks ago, ECU, Jonathan Banks, 16 yards on fourth down, put the green wave up seven, and the defense stands tall, denying the Pirates at the goal line, clinches a 31-24 victory in overtime. Seven days ago, down four in the fourth against Houston, Taron Ancalad, 64-yard score, a 20-17 lead, and a bit of a shocker for Willie Fritz upsetting the Cougars. Already had to call a timeout today. More massive motion in the split backfield. Braden West and Xavier Jones. And the rush on the edge. Able to chop him down after only a yard plus. Robert Kennedy gets the denial. Holding number 11 of the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, first down. And Michael Roche gives the word on Raymond Epps with the hold. And the Arizona State transfer, who had time in the JUCO ranks, got his first touchdown last week against Memphis. 
such a team guy, a big part of how they run the football with how he sets the edge. Absolutely, and I think on that last play, he was trying to seal the edge, and he got a little bit grabby with his hands, but he's, a, he's an excellent football player and a very good blocker. Out of the split backfield. Braden West has a seam. And he carries Taurus Chanel, gets the start at strong safety, an extra yard. Time to take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. At quarterback, Ben Hicks, who late was offered by Texas Tech, but flipped from Houston to SMU. And he has some big time numbers, four touchdowns, no picks last time out. Xavier Jones coming off a 100. 75-yard day alongside, Hicks to throw, finds his target. Hooks up with Trey Quinn. Quinn's working against Roderick Teamer in the slot. He's right here, and you're going to see him run the quick slant, and he crosses the face, and, then, and they're going to play man coverage. Jack Curtis, the defensive coordinator for Tulane. Play Hicks has some feet as well, beyond midfield, and a first down. <laughs> 18 yards for Hicks. Well, it's a zone read, and he's reading off of the pressure element that we just talked about with defensive coordinator Jack Curtis. They're blitzing off of the edge. He reads it. And one thing about Hicks, he certainly has a lot of moxie and confidence, and you saw some of it on that last play. Crochet in motion, play fake, kicks. Wide open, Crochet! Out of bounds at the 27, another first down strike. Well, they're gonna bring Crochet in motion. You're gonna see him come in motion and then go up, and then they clear out with these other two guys, and it's a good read by Hicks. 22 yards. Braden lost. yards and a rare ball on the ground for the Mustangs. SMU entered with only two lost fumbles. Only Iowa State had fewer in all the FPS. Yeah, you're exactly right. I think you called the last fumble return against Navy that he had for a touchdown. And you're going to see his ability to scoop and score. And that's just good team defense by Luke Jackson, number 44. He sets the edge against Mitchell Kaufman. Really Kaufman's. on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. They're going to look to see where this knee is down. They'll take another look. These are two teams that protect the ball. SMU, 10th fewest giveaways in the FBS. They're just outside the top five at turnover margin, plus 12. They get about a touchdown a game, thanks to turnovers, and spill it right to the opportunistic green wave. This is a big replay. Paul Zukas is our American Conference replay official upstairs. I think his knee is down. You can see from that angle that his knee is on the ground. Well, is the ball already coming loose? But it seems like simultaneous with the punch, that knee looks like it's down. And that's another good angle by our crew. The question. That ball does seem to be jarred yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the thing. If you, the knee is down, but was the ball already? And, and again, it was already called a fumble on the field. So they're going to have to have some conclusive evidence in the replay booth to overturn that call on the field. And it looked like I thought you made a good point, John. That the ball seemed like it was already beginning to come loose. It's hard to tell. You can hear the opinions of those in the stands here today. As it stands. 69-yard fumble recovery for Roderick Teamer, who did have that 52-yard rumble back for a score against Navy. And it sounds like he was down before that ball came loose. We still wait on official word as replay official Paul Zukas chats with referee Michael Roche. Let's take a look. Well, I think this is the first point we made. That area of the knee is down. and. I think it's kind of questionable as to whether or not that ball is coming loose. I thought you made a good point about it. But at that point, with you seeing the knee being down, they're going to go ahead and switch the call. 
After review, the runner's right knee was down before the ball became loose. Therefore, the SMU's ball, second down. And that completely flips the field here. It really does. And, and if I'm SMU now, I take a shot because you've just had a momentum change. And you've already hit Prochet up the sidelines. Uh, you've had a couple of big plays, but I take a shot right here to Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton's production has gone down a little bit. So has Trey Quinn's. They've been held in check some, losing three in a row. Now, yes, they hung 45 on the board at Memphis. But that was an ugly finish to the game after a long lightning delay. Xavier Jones. Chopped down at the 24. Ade Aruna, only a two-yard pickup. Let's meet the rest of the starters for the Mustang offense. You like the left tackle, Chad, personally. I do. A former basketball player from Legacy High School down here in Texas. I thought he did a good job of sitting down against TCU, one of the better opponents they've had. Sometimes he's been challenged by power, but the coaches love his athleticism. Had a torn ACL, non-contact injury in fall camp. Missed all of last year. Here's third down and seven. Hicks notices something up front. Tulane's defense has been stout deeper and within the red zone this year. Just outside the red zone, third down with pressure, leaping grab. Quinn gets a block in the angle. Leaps just shy. Jared Franklin was in the neighborhood. 20-yard gain for the nation's leader in catches. Well, they bring another pressure element with Zachary Harris, and now you're one-on-one -on -one with Jared Franklin, and I believe that's a mismatch for SMU. And again, we're going to see man coverage from this Tulane football team, and when you have that in the slot is where Quinn can make a difference. Cayman Freeman is in. High school quarterback, a bigger running back. Into his belly on the counter, has the edge, score! The sophomore claims the team lead, his 10th rushing touchdown, three yards out, 6 nothing Mustangs on senior day. This is all about vision. He follows back behind number 24, Mitchell Kaufman, and Kaufman makes an excellent block on the edge. Freeman pays it off. Kevin Robledo for the point after, a bit of a high snap, the spot. And the former Florida State preferred walk-on nails it. Cayman Freeman had a critical fumble going in against UCF. No such worry here. What an edge. And he walks it in. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. By Ram Trucks, proven to last. And by Chick-fil-A. Start game day strong with the new breakfast hash brown scramble bowl. Welcome back, everybody. SMU leading by a score of 7-0. It's Thanksgiving week, and this time of year, it's always difficult to be away from your family, but both teams made it a priority to have a team meal. The two lane players got together and bonded over quite the spread, and then SMU did a Thanksgiving family dinner with the team on Wednesday night, and then they were free on Thursday afternoon after morning practice, so a lot of the local players from the area could head back home to their family. So nice to see all these guys get together for Thanksgiving. Well, appreciate that, Melanie. And senior day special for SMU. The 12 seniors for Tulane were honored last week in that familial sense on vivid display. Up man time over top of Patterson and a hard chop at the 23. So we take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineups for the Tulane Green Wave. The quarterback in that mass is Jonathan Banks, 6'2", 215, but he's surrounded by some bigger fellas. At one point considered SMU during one of his transfers a couple of years ago. Yeah, and I thought that, that may have been a good fit for him because of what he can bring to the table in the run game. We just saw Hicks peel off a pretty big run for the Mustangs. But this quarterback has gotten better as the year has gone on, and SMU has a challenge to stop his legs today. Receiver motion. Side run, and the gash closes on Dontrell Hilliard. He gets dragged down after a pickup of five. 
Teron Ancalade is probably uh, their toughest football player. It's not often you hear a wide receiver being the toughest football player on your offense, but I like watching him just block. You can put a highlight reel the last, a highlight reel the last two years of his blocks and enjoy it. Very physical wideout. Coming off a career day, nearly 200 receiving yards last week. The clap of the hands, play fake, lob it out. Charles Jones the second. He's got size and hands, and he's got a first down as he gains seven. Rodney Clemens helped him out of bounds. And they've gone to this play a little bit more because it's off of one of their base run plays, and Jones has gotten out and, and caught some passes. In fact, they ran that play a week ago against Houston. So it's a play that they're starting to use if you're overplaying their run game. Play fake again. Banks sticks it to Jacob Robertson, Jr., yanked down by Mikhail Onu. He gets about six. We take a look at the defense for SMU and the big fella Pono Davis. Well, he's going to have to be a factor inside. He's played well. Uh, defensive coordinator Van Malone has talked about just how efficient he's been and it kind of goes under the radar because they have some stalwarts up front. He said they, he didn't know how big an impact he would have. Another play fake. Banks in the air to ball. Incomplete. Active hands up front for the Mustangs. Anthony Roan back today missed Memphis after a concussion against Navy. It looks like that might have been Mason Gentry along with the guy you mentioned a minute ago, Davis. Watch them get their hands up. And it's Gentry wearing a, got a club on that left hand. And he took him to the club. That was a pretty good bet down. Fractured it last week against Memphis per our own Melanie Collins. Third and four. They're not great on third down, but they go for it on fourth a lot. Another play fake. Quick slam, and they get the hookup. The underneath passing game is there in abundance, and there's Ancalade for eight. Well, in the, in, the, in the third and fourth range, you're going to get these double slants on both sides all day. And you're going to see them uh, find the hole. It's basically man coverage with no help. And they're working the safety to the field side, Rodney Clemens with Ancalade. Again, I think that's an advantage for the Green Wave. Hard cadence, motion. Thanks again. Wide open. The zigzag by Darnell Mooney. Mooney swings it out. And the block leads him in. Darnell Mooney to pay dirt 52 yards. He's the smallest of their three primary wide receivers, but he's the man that OC Doug Roos said can take the top off the defense. Well, there's nobody in the middle of the field. And so you've got Cedric Lancaster out here one-on-one, -on -one, and they're just going to the club again. We talked about the club on the hand of Gentry, where he's dancing all over the club with Lancaster and beats him to the zone. Very pass-heavy for the Green Wave to tie it up. Merrick Glover nails it. Tulane storms down the field. Mooney has exploded of late. 23 of his 29 grabs have come in the last five-plus games. That one for 52 yards and his third score. These two players are the players to watch. You, you've got Ankala coming in motion, and then you're followed by Michael Onu. So as we let it run, pause it right here. Now you're going to see there's nobody in the middle of the field. So when you get this post route, the quick post, nobody in the middle of the field, if you let it run, Banks hits him right in stride, and now you've got Lancaster one-on-one. -on -one. They're just dancing. And he makes a number of moves to get free, but nobody being in the middle of the field. And that motion, when you saw those two players and man-to-man -man gave Banks the pre-snap indicator. A lot of passes for Jonathan Banks, who said that a rib injury suffered that knocked him out of game two against Navy slowed him during the year. He anointed himself 100% last week in the win against Houston when he had his career day over 250 in the air. This ball deep enough for a touchback. Sunday, December the 10th, join CBS Sports Network live from the Lot Impact Trophy Award show, honoring college football's best defensive player in character and performance right here on the 24-hour home 
of CBS Sports. Here's a gaze of the semifinalists this year. The inaugural award went to the late great American Pat Tillman in the wake of his unfortunate passing. Corey Chavis, I think if this award were around in your days, you might have been up for this distinction. Well, I don't know about that, but Pat Tillman was a former teammate of mine and a really good friend. We, we were neighbors, actually, and uh, no one more deserving than him. Split backfield, play fake, kicks on the roll. He's got West underneath, goes a tag longer, and gets the first down, hooking up with Trey Quinn. Jared Franklin was there, make that Cortland Sutton. It's a pickup of 18. Well, they're just dragging him across the field, John, and look at the accuracy. You put it out in front, and he can get yards after the catch and use that big frame to make tacklers miss. Already knocking on the doorstep of midfield. Lots of two-back sets from SMU. Another play fake. Everything opening up. And that's going to earn in midfield. Seven yards as we take a look at the starters for Tulane, including Sean Wilson at nose. We talk about all of these pass plays that SMU likes to run, but Sean Wilson's going to have to be a factor against a rushing attack averaging nearly 5.1 yards per carry. And they have 24 touchdowns on the ground. Wilson, another unsung hero for the Green Wave. Now, Willie Fritz believes that he'll be an all-conference player one day. Big fella clogging the gaps, but SMU dinking and dunking. Come on, come on, man. Xavier Jones right through the first and second wave, finally driven back right around the marker. It looks like the spot is good for a first. Indeed, they'll move the change for Xavier Jones. The progress gives him three yards. Exactly. Harris, the denial, top three tackler on the team. But Jones was hurt late. Last week, in the blowout loss at Memphis, suffered a hamstring injury last year, then hurt his shoulder against Temple, and that shoulder started to tighten up during the nearly hour lightning delay last week. Blitz is on. Pocket arrives and hits. He somehow earns a yard. Let's take a look at your keys to today's game. Well, I think the last play that you just called, bring third down fire, I think that's a big key. Create 10 chunk plays. We've already seen one down in the truck. I know y'all are charting that. And then run, run, run on offense for SMU. We just talked about that rush attack. And I said stop Banks. You've got to stop him and his legs outside the pocket if you have the SMU defense. Chad Morris says he wants balance running and passing out of his Mustangs. Trips loaded on the far side. Come on, Hicks come on, go the Against the grain. And he takes the horn for a first down. Tripped up by Ade Aruna, the 6'6", 270-pound D tackle. Ten yards for Hicks. Well, again, Hicks is doing a good job of reading through what's going on in terms of the up front. Who actually has the force position? Fakes the toss, runs it up inside. Getting more confident as a runner as the year has gone on. Hicks only averaging a yard and a half per carry. 17 sacks, part of that. That was read beautifully. Immediate arrival by Sean Wilson. Ball loose, but the whistle blared first. Xavier Jones' forward progress was thwarted. What a pop by Wilson. <laughs> Unbelievable. And he's, they're actually trying to use a different type of blocking scheme when trapping him. And so they've got number 75, Hayden Howard, to, trying to trap him. He says, you can't trap me. If anything, you're trapped. Second down at 14. At 13. Howard's in a true freshman. Low snap. Hicks handles with a plumb. One on one. Incomplete. Physical fracas down the sidelines. And we do have a flag down back at the 40. Offside. Number one in the defense. Five yard penalty, second down. The redshirt senior, Adea Aruna. Indeed. And Hicks knew he had a free play there. He did, and that was smart on Hicks's part. And Aruna, an NFL prospect, has not had his best season. I think he's played better, John, in recent weeks. But I, I think overall, it's been a little bit of a disappointing season for Aruna. 
Uh, a guy who has 12 career quarterback sacks and 19 tackles for losses. He'll be at the NFLPA Collegiate Bowl, the Rose Bowl, January 20th, to showcase his talents. Freeman latched onto it, ripped down by Aruna. Right on cue, he makes another play soaring in the air. Only a few. And I think it comes down to his strength and his size. I'm talking about a player that's six foot six, 275 pounds. And you have a pretty good battle for who you want to see get off the bus first, either Aruna or Cortland Sutton for SMU. What do you do on third and eight? Well, third and eight, this is a team that likes to throw the football in long distance situations to the slot receiver here, Prochet. Well, that's actually Gilliard or Sutton at the top. Hicks instead runs the toss. The hesitation by West. Teamer grapples on and makes a clean tackle. Only a yard. Surprising to see a simple Absolutely. toss play? Absolutely, unless this is four down territory. This is a team that has gone for it 18 times on fourth down, and they're, they're 15th in the nation. So that may have been the thinking. Pick up some of it there. And now you've got Quinn in the slot. We've already seen him have some matchup issues with them. They're going to play some zone too late. Aruna went again. Hicks another free play. And a bad break. The footing slipped out. As Donnie Lewis was in coverage on the far side. Offside, number one of the defense. It's a five-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, there's a rule, and that's inexcusable. Now, you got to give Hicks some credit with changing up the snap count, but you can't jump off sides twice in a drive if you're a runer. And I don't even think his teammates want to talk to him coming off the sideline because they know a bowl game is on the line, and now the coach is beginning to reel him back in. So only fourth down and a couple of yards here. Haruna watches from the sidelines. Big front for Tulane, and Hicks wants a timeout. Play clock had whittled down to That's two for Chad Morris' team. It'll be a 30-second timeout. So each team has exhausted a timeout. Tulane did before the first second slipped off the clock at the game start. Fourth down critical here. SMU has waffled between kickers Josh Williams and Kevin Robledo. Consistency has been what's lacking, according to head coach Chad Morris. And I think he knows touchdowns will be of import today. Uh, I really think that that's a, a great point by you. And, and I was actually down the field, and we were talking to Melanie Collins before the game about who would you see today for both teams? On the other side, it's the same thing that you just talked about for SMU, Merrick Glover. Is he going to be a factor? Or will Keenan get the reps? I think both teams' kicking situations is something to monitor the rest of the game. Willie Fritz is likely to break out everything. It's something that SMU's coaching staff talked about it ad nauseum to expect a lot of trick plays. SMU doesn't have to get cute on fourth and two. The bigger back, it's Freeman, is in. Sprint out here. Hicks says go free. What a stabbing one-hand grab. Portland Sutton, one of the catches of the year against Jared Franklin. <laughs> if you want to see a player solidify, okay, I am going to be a first-rounder. Here you go. Wow. <laughs> Good route, better catch. 20 yards, and Freeman bowls his way into the teeth of the defense, earns the four. But, Corey, this is where <laughs> Tulane's defense has thrived. It's not even just the red zone. They love that 12-yard in-in mark, the hot zone. Yeah, and in the hot zone, you saw the ECU game on fourth down. They had two stops on fourth down in that hot zone that you're referring to, John. And now it's getting real hot because you've got two of the hottest receivers in the country at the bottom of the screen in a run game with Freeman that's very effective. Second and goal. Freeman zigzags a path. Touchdown. Second score of the day for the sophomore to Texarkana, Texas. Point after. Off the upright, touchdown lead. Yeah, 
Here's one of those catches that you won't see much unless you're watching Sunday afternoon ball. He made that look easy, and now you've got Kaufman leading, and guess what? A finish. This week's college football playoff poll is powered by Ram Trucks. Probably one of the surprises, I think, that Miami losing to Pitt by 10 for some people, but Pitt has done that before. And I think you, you understand what type of football team that they are. They beat Clemson last year, another playoff team. And, that Notre Dame and Stanford game, I think that's a game to kind of keep an eye on tonight. This game right here, I think that's a big game in terms of this whole playoff picture. Here's the boot. Hutterson. Stephon Hutterson right back, sheds it up. Yanked on high and ripped down nearly at midfield. What a burst. Shelby Walker gets the stop to lane a 44-yard return. Willie Fritz said kick returns would be pivotal in this game. Well, this is a team that has struggled this year on kick returns after having Beatty be one of the nation's best a season ago. And now we talked about chunk plays. It's not just offense. On special teams, can you create chunk plays? So we need to mark that play down. Already at midfield, John, and I tell you what, now's a time where you can think about a play action pass once again if you're too late. Already averaging 18 per completion. Thanks for a five on that touchdown drive. Sells the fake, but SMU sniffs it out. He's down after a yard as we check in with Melody Collins for more on Tulane's wide receiver core. Yeah, well, offensive coordinator Doug Roos said that when it comes to his receivers, whether it's on Kalad Banks or Mooney, he can't say enough about their competitiveness. He said the more pressure is on and the more they're in crunch time, the more those guys step up and thrive in that pressure. And he said we go for it on fourth down so much that it opens up the playbook on third and mediums where they can make a first and ten type call because they know if they don't connect, they'll just go for it on fourth down. That's just part of Fritz's philosophy. Appreciate that. Another play fake. Knocked down. He had Darnell Mooney, who has a touchdown, wide open again. But the active hands of Rodney Clemens swatted away. You've got to be able to find passing lanes as a quarterback. That's on you. That was an excellent play by Clemens. Their field of safety. But now is where Banks, I'd be alert for Banks and the legs here if you're SMU. You have to be alert for him going to the legs, his legs, and running it on some of these situations if his initial receiver is covered. Third and nine, three down linemen. Moody motion, splits his eye. Bank steps up. Off the hands, incomplete. A little behind his target as he again tried to look for Darnell Moody. Kevin Johnson arrived as well. So a three and out after the kick return had them just six yards shy of midfield. Trey Quinn, return man. Both teams struggle on punt return. 119th and 120th respectively in the country. Zachary blocks punt. Quinn lets it bound to the five. Into the end zone for a touchback. 53 yard punt, no chance to run it back. Let's take a look at Ben Hicks's day. Well, part of it has been getting his legs involved and not just believing that you know what the defense is going to do, reading through it, and then finding the open men in those one-on-one -on -one matchups. This really more Cortland Sutton just saying, I got your back. <laughs> Incredible ability to high point. Seven for seven is Hicks who got the start last year when Matt Davis went down, a torn ACL in the opener against North Texas. He struggled his first four games, three touchdowns, nine starts, 15 touchdowns, six picks down the stretch. And here, the play fake not quite sold. 
A rip into the backfield by Tyrese Barge at the nickelback, who Jack Curtis said we'd see in a limited role. Yeah, and, and, and I think you've seen him on the kickoff team have some uh, success. And one thing that I liked about him on the kickoff team, against double teams, he would actually be able to beat some of them. And, and, and that type of aggressiveness could come up big in this game. Loss of six there, second and 16. Blitz on. Hicks steps up. Quinn over time. What body control. And that was a battle with Perry Nickerson for Portland Sutton as he launches on top and rips it in 23 yards. Well, it's a battle of two NFL prospects, and Nickerson wants this challenge, but it's a big challenge in, in terms of 200 plus pounds. Hicks looping it around. Dead to right. Slides down and takes the harm. No gain or loss. But one thing about these corners, uh, John, I, I think they're they're so good at forgetting the last play, which I think is necessary to be an excellent corner. And I think that's why Nickerson has 15 interceptions. You see Lewis there. Both of these cornerbacks, they just want to keep competing. So they're, they're not concerned about whether or not you beat them on a route. And, and I think that kind of translates to their safety position as well. Ability to forget rapidly. Quarter draining down. Hicks over the middle into the turf. Shelby Walker was there as we get more from Melody Collins on the latest with Ade Aruna. Well, Corey was talking about the importance of a short-term memory. Well, Aruna had two offsides penalties in that last drive, and he was sitting on the end of the bench, visibly upset and frustrated with himself. And Donnie Lewis and a bunch of other guys came up to him, patted, on the, patted him on the back, and said, hey, it's okay, man. But mentally, for Aruna, something to keep an eye on as this game goes on. Appreciate that, Melanie. Hicks, after his first incompletion, had begun the game eight for eight. Faces third, down and ten. This is where you need Aruna in these pass-first situations. Pressure comes. Hicks hammered a wobbler incomplete, looking for Prochet. Chanel was there, but the rip came through and active hands. It was Aruna. <laughs> We're talking about Aruna. Watch him get his hands up. On cue, Melanie. You want to step up after having some bad plays? Here I go, Aruna. And the pressure, as you mentioned, from Jackson and, Fra and, and also Franklin, but Aruna, and we saw that against ECU a couple of weeks back on fourth down. You talk about forgetting a mistake. He forgot that one quickly and made a play. James Sackville has not had a punt block this year. Gets this one just off. Jacob Robertson. From his 26, flag down. So is he at the 32. Michaela Onu, the special team stop. And we'll see the laundry from referee Michael Roche. During the return, legal block in the back, number 37 of the receiving team. The 10 yard penalty, because the period ended and the foul occurred, will extend the period for one on time down. So it goes on to the carrier's keys, and we'll get one more snap before the first quarter is officially over. Each team had started to huddle up respectively and take its short <laughs> pause and not have to race back out there. The Tulane's been very pass heavy at the game start. And, and I think the part of it, uh, you bring up a good point because this is a team that wants to establish their inside zone. And, and what I mean by that is that's a zone blocking concept that their runners have to have some instincts. We haven't heard a lot from Hillyard yet, and he's an excellent player. But they're trying to set up the run with the pass. Seven pass attempts, only two rushes. Hilliard. Dead to right. Swarmed by Mustangs. And dropped at the 11. A loss of six thanks to Rodney Clemens. And that's the end of the first quarter. We're through the opening quarter, a 14-7 margin in favor of the host Mustangs. It's college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by the Home Depot.
Welcome back, everybody. SMU leading Tulane by a score of 14 to 7. And there is a young man named Cameron Jones and his family in attendance at this game today. And Cameron had the opportunity to meet Coach Chad Morris and a number of the SMU players this summer while in the hospital at Children's Dallas. He was having skull surgery, and before his visit with the team took place, Cameron had been laying in his hospital bed without much energy, not speaking much. Well, these football players offered words of encouragement to Cameron that his mother, Crystal Norwood, says truly ignited a fire in him and completely turned his mood and demeanor around. She was so grateful for that, and he gave the team a pregame pep talk yesterday, and his favorite player is Anthony Roan. Appreciate that, and Roan just back today himself from a concussion at that linebacker spot, second and 16 with the second quarter underway. Thanks. Wow, what pressure! And an ugly, vicious hit as Kyron Mitchell, the star hybrid linebacker, slashes in for a loss of four. You're going to see number 35, Delonte Scott, just run right over Charles Jones II and runs him into the quarterback, and that sets it up for the guy that you just mentioned, Mitchell. So now you've got guys competing to get to the quarterback. SMU has really come out aggressive with their front under defensive coordinator Van Malone. They're going to play zone here and mix it up front. Make it two to four, third and 23. And they get nothing on the ground. Kyron Mitchell again. I actually think this is a very important punt for Tulane. Zachary Block hasn't had quite as good of a year to me as he had a year ago, but he's got to make sure that he changes the flip field position here. Block booms it. Trey Quinn flails for fair catch. Oh, and it takes an SMU roll. Touched by Tulane. Robert Kennedy got a paw on it at around the 29-yard line, a disastrous 24-yard punt. Well, that's what I mentioned before, because if you don't have a good punt, you don't flip the field, he loses it off the side of his foot. He knew it right away. And now you're giving them an opportunity at the least for three points to make it a two-possession game. So these special teams in these types of games where you're trying to compete for a bowl game, special teams, so important. Keep in mind, Tulane trying to become bowl eligible for the first time since 2013. The Green Wave has won back-to-back -back games to arrive here at 5-6. and six. SMU has lost three in a row, started 6-2, and two, needs a win to have a winning regular season on senior day. Picks. Into the flat, Jones shows some shake. Makes two different men miss. Rajon Marbley, part of the duo there. Robert Kennedy finally clasps down after a gate of five. Well, Quinlan Carroll has a chance after they, they're looking for Quinn. They come back to his option, and then Carroll just can't make the tackle. SMU has owned the ball. A two-lane team that entered top 25 in the country, averaging 237 yards rushing, has had minimal effect today. Xavier Jones with space and spin, first down to the 12, a 12 yard pickup. Tara Chanel with the tackle. Well, off the left side of that line, this led by Raymond Epps. He gets up to the second level and makes an excellent block on the linebacker. He cuts back off of that block. Jones has good vision and he presses the line the right way. And, and you talked about this, two backs in the backfield again on this snap. Play big hicks. Swung down, Jared Franklin, the nickelback. A loss of six. We're going to watch him come off the edge, and does a, does a good job of not missing the layup. It's a good call by defensive coordinator Jack Curtis, who's going to bring pressure. Franklin's a, a player that came into the game with six tackles for losses because they used him a lot to run blitz. That time it ended up a play action pass and he got the sack. Tackling has been largely clean for Tulane. It's been a trouble spot for SMU on the year, particularly on the three game losing skip. 
to the play clock at one. Pocket holds, Hicks. Too long, incomplete. Looking in the corner for Trey Quinn, who was matched up with Donnie Lewis. Well, they had a bracket on Trey Quinn, and they bracketed both sides, the slot receivers on both sides, and they let their corners on the outside play with no help. And, and that's one of the things that they've got to be able to, and you see Jack Curtis, we've talked about him a lot today. He mixes it up in storied history. Coached for five years at Georgia Southern. Coached a lot of the NFL, also coached at Central Missouri and Arkansas State. A lot of NFL players under his tutelage. And a lot of combined years with Willie Fritz winning at every level. Play clock again. Down to two this time around. Hicks. Arena gives chase. Hicks picked off. Intercepted by Chanel. And he shields the football. Chanel down at the 43. His first interception. Chanel a converted corner to safety. A 38-yard return. They made a wrinkle in their starting lineup. They moved Teamer to free safety. Chanel in it strong, and it pays off. Interception, Taurus Chanel is given to lane the ball. Well, Chanel's right here, and he's going to actually go and double over here on Cortland Sutton. So we'll, we'll let it run, and you're going to see them lose contain. And he gets outside of the pocket. Now, go back to the Cincinnati game a couple of weeks back. Pause it right here. Fourth and 26, he found somebody in the middle of the field. And so he thinks he's going to make another miraculous play where there's Chanel coming off the double team on Sutton and he actually baits him into the mistake. So throwing against his body, which you mentioned, John, during the break, you can't get away with that on a consistent basis. Got away with it against Cincinnati, not today. Trey Quinn, who caught that fourth and 26, got the tackle there. SMU started that drive at the 29, got nothing. Play pick, Banks. A lot of quick hitters underneath in the air for Tulane. They are taking regular advantage. Taron Ancalad's been the main recipient. Absolutely, and they put him at the number two slot position to create a matchup problem. They move him around a lot, both he and Mooney. One guy we haven't seen today so far has been Jabril Cluis, another one of their receivers, but Roberts has been getting some time. Cluis on the right side, Sherman Beatty in a tail. Hilliard has been the bell cow running back watch. Unique to see Beatty used here. Motion from Jones. Baxton He just climbed a quarter of the field on five strides. That stride is similar. Was listening to you call the game a couple of weeks back against Navy, and I watched the quarterback run for nearly 300 yards. And Banks is another guy who can run the football. SMU has been struggling to stop quarterbacks who can run. Last week, Ferguson, Riley Ferguson from Memphis, he had three rushing touchdowns. 21 yards there for Banks, trying to awaken a silent rush attack. They're finally back positive. Inside run sniffed out here. Nobody bit on that thing. Chris Biggers was in the pile along with Anthony Rowe. I like Demrick Gary, too, number 10. He's a very physical player, looks the part. Now, he had a better year a season to go with seven and a half tackles for losses, but he still has been productive. He's rotated, and I think they need him to have a big game today. Had two sacks in their stunning upset of Houston last year for the Mustangs. Motion on second and eight. Play fake to Hilliard. Not quite on the same page with Darnell Mooney, who did not look back as the football whizzed in. Well, he had a touchdown, and I think you've mentioned that twice now, Mooney being wide open. You can't get these plays back. He's wide open in the middle of the field with nobody there but the safety. Wins, timing off. Watch this. If he catches this ball in stride, who's there but Clemens? And now it's third down, and you talked about those quick hitters. You got to pay attention to Arch a lot in the slot. Three down linemen, probably four down territory for an aggressive two-lane team. And a major change with a play clock at six. Hilliard loses.
loses yards. Ripped down at the 27 by Dimrick Gary. Gary's inside and he can beat your offensive lineman if they're not on point. I think that time it was Dominique Briggs Jr. that he got across the face of with his initial quickness. And they're going to go for it just as you said, John, on fourth down. And you've got to be alert for the quick hitting game now. Quick slants on this down when they're in this two by two set. 14th best in the country, second best in the conference. They've been great in recent weeks. Play clock in one, they just get it off. Banks with a pocket, collapses. He's down, the ball's free! Scooped up, SMU ball. Dimrick Gary again finds the free football. It's a turnover on downs anyway, but it seems to give an even bigger emotional boost when the ball is not free from Banks. Well, I mean, Delonte Scott has had a, a very good start to this game. You can see Justin Lawler coming. But Kyron Mitchell, Delonte Scott, Lawler, who's always been on point, when it comes to having tenacity, tackles for losses, nobody better than the Mustangs. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Bud Light, famous among friends. And by Polaris Ranger, the hardest working, smoothest riding utility side by side. A gasp exhale. The horde of plenty continues for the turkeys that have departed. They live another year. Van Malone's defense getting some driving pressure. Better job of tackling today. And a lead for the Mustangs on senior day. Hicks. Wobbler, one footed. Go! Sutton out of bounds, battling with Donnie Lewis. Why throw this ball? Well, I mean, I, I think he felt like, because of this, I think this is a catch. And I think they're going to have to review this and overturn it. That is a catch. And that that's right why foot he, not out of bounds? I think, well, now if he stepped out before, he can't be the first to come back in and touch it. But I, I think the right foot came down in bounds before the left foot stepped out. That was at least my look at it. And you can see, watch this right foot come down first. Going on the field is an incomplete pass. That play right is under review. The right foot comes down first. If we can take it back in the truck a little bit, you'll see that it comes down before that left foot stepped out of bounds. At least that's my take. But, and this is a better look at it. Watch his right foot right here. Comes down. Now it's already down. And so it doesn't matter about that left yeah, foot. Yeah, that heel anymore. doesn't hit until yeah, after. Yeah. So, but again, that's, you, you, I thought you brought up a good point. Why throw this ball? If you've got this guy over there, <laughs> I'm throwing it up every time, one-on-one. -on -one, and that's the danger of, of, of playing so much man coverage against Cortland Sutton. He's got to come through against these good, good two-lane corners. Yeah, Donnie Lewis gets overshadowed by Perry Nickerson, but Donnie Lewis is 6'1", 190, a long player, leads them in breakups. He's a good player. He really is, and and you you said I like what you said. You said long, because I think that's what NFL scouts. I was down on the field talking to some scouts before the game. I said, hey, listen, well, we're gonna let them make this call, and we'll get back to that. But good point you make. After review, the runner's right foot was in bounds with possession of the ball. And he maintained possession throughout the catch. Therefore, it is a completion for a first down, the 43-yard line. He is putting it all out there. He's technically a redshirt junior, but he participated in senior day activities today. And for more, we check in with Melanie. Thanks, John. Well, Cortland Sutton's created a ton of buzz regarding his future in the NFL. And Coach Morris said he's like a bigger DeAndre Hopkins with the way he can contort his body. He's six four and a half. He's strong, 6.4% body fat. His 33 and a half inch vertical doesn't jump off the page, but his arms are so long that he compensates for that. And Shave, you and I have been talking. He reminds you of Terry. Owens. He really does, Mel. And, and Terrell Lawrence was a, a, a third round draft pick. I think this guy will go higher than that. Four grabs, 85 yards with a blitz on. Hicks goes opposite. I'm not sure that was the intended target. And what a hurdle there by Xavier Jones. I think he was going over top and Jones <laughs> plucked it away. And these running backs haven't gotten that involved in the past game. I think you mentioned that as well. And you can see it as Jones is going to come out of the backfield 
late. You're right. He's going over here trying to throw it to Braden West, and Jones says, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Picks up eight yards. Do they take a shot here on second and two? Haven't heard from Proche in a while. Stay a little counter run. And it's Lewis, the corner from behind, able to finally latch on to the elusive Xavier Jones 11-yard gain. It's good vision by Jones again, and he's doing a really good job of reading off of his interior offensive lineman that time again, Hayden Howard. Tempo here. Jones denied right in the heart of the defensive front, only a yard. Surrounded by multiple Green Wave players, including Ray John Marbley and Cameron Sample. Now they've been good in the red zone. You also mentioned the hot zone. They've got to really shore up now because they're not a team that is going to be able to make as many big plays as SMU. This is a very important red zone potential drive, and they're getting close. Pistol look. Hicks saddles up under center. Play fake. That 23 yard score means a 20 to 7 margin against a team that's largely run heavy on the year. Oh, tight end throwback. Cool when we, we'll take another look at it, but that, that was a really good play design by their offensive coordinator, Joe Craddock. Extra point, not pretty for Kevin Robledo. But the play call poetic by the 32-year-old OC on high. And the sophomore takes plummet advantage. He had one catch all year. <laughs> Hooks up with the wide open tight end. He strolls in and Ben Hicks fired up. The competitor up 20 to 7. Let's check in with Larry's Roadshow, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. At a glance at SMU's Heritage Hall, opened in September of 2000, along with this stadium, Gerald J. Ford Stadium, a lasting monument to the great athletics history here at SMU. The shadow of Doak Walker won the 1948 Heisman at SMU. The retired numbers and the flags that fly on this modestly windy senior day, a little warmer than the norm. Don't need a jacket today. But the heat piling up as SMU has brought the offense, including little used Ryan Becker. One catch all season, just yanked in a wide open 23 yard touchdown grab. And a little pooch on side. Flares into the SMU bench, the flag down for the illegal procedure. It's not been pretty for Kevin Robledo, who just missed an extra point. Assumed the duties largely from Josh Williams a few weeks ago. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball be placed five yards from the out of bounds spot. First down. That means better field position for the Green Wave. Tomorrow, the NFL on CBS. The Dolphins face Brady and the Patriots. Then a matchup between two NFC division leaders. The Red Hot Saints visit the 7-3 LA Rams. It all begins with the NFL today, presented by Southwest Airlines at 12 Eastern. Three receiver greats from SMU. Now in the National Football League, Cole Beasley and the Cowboys suffered a tough loss to the Chargers on Thanksgiving. But 3,000 yards for Emmanuel Sanders, Aldrick Robinson, and also for Cortland Sutton. He's having himself a day for SMU. First downs favor SMU, 13 to four. There's a first down and more for the Green Wave. One play. Banged in the end zone, touchdown. Darius Bradwell, 57 yards. You have to go deep on the depth chart for this quarterback running back. He was a QB in high school, and what a fake. Yeah, it was an excellent fake, and he showed uh, the ability to skip. And you saw this against Oklahoma when he came in the game. You've, seen, you've also seen it against Houston. I mean, this is a player that, you know, he, he's kind of been one of those guys forgotten about. But he came into the game averaging almost six yards per carry. 57 yards there. The point after is true. A much needed response for the Green Wave. 
One play, a big score, and a one-score game once more in Dallas. Twenty to fourteen, SMU the lead, but Tulane crept closer thanks to this one play explosive drive. Well, it's a version of their split zone, and so they have everybody go one way, and you have on collide, and actually Charles Jones the second go another, and now it comes down to the vision. And if you pause it here, these are the two blocks: Junior Diaz right here, and then also you got Dominique Briggs. He shows the vision and comes back through and almost fools the ca our camera guys. And then Bradwell gets free. It's a, it's a play that they scored on as well. The exact same play against ECU a couple of weeks back. It's a base play where they kind of overload you in terms of bringing people into the box. And then they let their players split the action to take some of your run defenders out of the box. 13 yards on the first nine rushes, 57 on the last. The two scores. 57-yard run and a 52-yard bomb for Tulane. Here's Kevin Johnson. Slips through a few, but gets harnessed at the 23-yard line. Marvin Moody, the special team stop. Coming up on the Halftime Report, powered by Ram Trucks, Adam Zucker, Brian Jones, Rick Neuheisel stand by in our New York studio. They'll have you covered at all the day's highlights, get you prepped for the rest of the action on this all-important college football Saturday. Head your way on the Halftime Report, powered by Ram Trucks. Ben Hicks on the three scoring drives for SMU is 10 for 10, 158 yards, and he's been dealing with pressure. He has been dealing with pressure and will continue to. I think for them it's about now making sure you don't forget completely about the run game at the end of this second quarter. They go four wide, single back. Hicks to the air. What a move by Trey Quinn! Bye -bye. Seventy-seven yards and his eleventh receiving touchdown. It is hard to find a receiving core with three more dynamic stars than SMU. It really is, and if you're going to miss tackles, you don't have to run the ball. Inside out, angle tackle, and Quinn says, no way. I think that was Roderick Teamer who missed that tackle, and Quinn shows that 10-9-3, 100-meter speed in high school. Extra point is good. And a nice subtle job to shift the football, maintained that speed, and got it outside to protect it. Oh, there's so many things that I'm thankful for. I've got a uh, great family and, and, you know, the opportunity to live in such a great country. I, I never take that for granted. Words can't describe just how thankful I am to be blessed to be a part of a staff that cares so much about developing young men and young women uh, into better people. Chad Morris, when he arrived, he inherited a program that was next to last in the FBS in yardage, dead last in scoring, 11 per game. The team had gone 0-11 on the regular season. And here, the 18 seniors that slogged through as freshmen that 0-11 campaign, top 10 in the country in scoring and yards and a chance for a winning regular season record. Sherman Beatty down near the logo. As we take a look at what Trey Quinn was able to accomplish in his earlier athletics feats, a no-no in the Little League World Series for Lake Charles. His dad was an assistant coach on that team. They were tamed by Hawaii in the championship, a Hawaiian team that went on to win the overall world title. And two of his teammates on that Little League team, big parts of the College World Series LSU Tigers these days. Oh, wow. Something else, an excellent athlete. A U.S. Army All-American wide receiver at the high school level. He's shown that athleticism in the American Conference and the nation it may not be many better than Quinn. Had trouble with drops at LSU. Has had some trouble with that with SMU as well. Right up the gut, the pound. And they'll get about four. Mikhail Onu able to deny Darius Bradwell. Why not go back to Bradwell? after he ripped off a 57-yard touchdown trot in the last possession. And I know they have to get chunk plays, but I think now if you're Willie Fritz, you've got to be thinking along with offensive coordinator Doug Roos 
in terms of now maybe taking some time off the clock on this final drive before the half. Second and five, Jones in motion. Option. Banks turns it up. Tripped up at the 32, gets to. Anthony Roan gets the stop. So third down arrives in a heartbeat. We've seen such explosive plays. Willie Fritz, his Tulane Green Wave, traded haymakers with SMU. Each team scored a touchdown in less than 30 total seconds. Well, they're going to go with two tight ends in the game. Kendall Ardwan and Charles Jones in second. And I think this is a chance for maybe a zone read with Banks. It's one of four on third down with the blitz on. Banks tries to find a hole in a small crevice. Pops free. The spot seems to be favorable. Yes. Move the chains. He just earns the first down. Well, you got to be able to do more as a running back than just run the ball at Tulane. And that time, Bradwell got out in front to lead block. Now they're going to come back with Hilliard, who's not been as big of a factor as I would have expected in this game. He's actually out wide this time. Only his eight catches all year. You would think a decoy. Blitz shown from the far side. Hard clap. Banks trying to get them to tip. The blitz comes. Banks, what a shot on the fake! Outstretched over Mikhail Onu. They have the blitz coming on that side. <laughs> He kind of he kind of reads whether or not they close down a little bit too flat. I think you'll see they're going to close down a little bit too flat off the edge. And he says, you know what? If you're going to close that fast, Christian Davis, I'll take it. And then I think Onu makes an excellent tackle recovering for Davis. But yeah. I think there's a good pace to this drive, though, for Tulane. Second down and medium, which Willie Fritz said his offense considers a win. On Talon, he's been quiet for a while. Bradwell pounds to the 43. Anthony Roan slips him up there. Pick up of about four. So here's third down and short. Now you wonder, John, is this two or four down territory for Tulane? If you run it again and you don't get it, would you go for it near, near midfield with as much productivity as their offense has had against your defense? That's the question. And you've been keeping an eye on the safeties for SMU and how they've been playing them. Absolutely. Inside run. Solid job of contact, just short. This could depend upon the spot. He appears to be about half a yard shy. Pono Davis and Delonte Scott arrived. Yeah, along with those safeties you just mentioned, they came up in the run support. And now for a team that's been so good on fourth down, 14th in the nation, here we go again. And if you don't get this fourth down, you change it. The entire complexion of the game. They're 0 for 1 when they went for it on 4th and 10. Pressure shown. Banks switched to the sideline. In need of less than a yard. They got it. They can grind it out. Kyron Mitchell gets a paw in there on Bradwell. 6'1", 225. He is the bruising big rusher for Tulane. He is, and, and I think it's good that they've gotten him involved. And now you can go back to Hilliard as a change of pace. You can do, a, you have a lot of options now, but you got to be thinking clock because you've let it get under two minutes. Two timeouts. First pass of the drive. Banks. And Mooney able to grab it. Gets shoved down near the marker. Jordan Wyatt, the turnover machine. That's a gain of 11. That'll move the chains and stop the clock. Yeah, it was a, an excellent play by both Banks and Moody, and it was a hands catch to keep it away from Jordan Wyatt. And now you've got to be alert of where Ancolot is at. He's in the slot, and we're talking about two minutes now. So there's Ancolot in the slot. You've got to find him if you're SMU. He sweeps in. Pressure on, play fake. Banks has one on ones. Wide open, and they cannot connect. Devin Glenn curling back to the ball, the former running back. He had major space. Well, because he's so fast. He's probably their fastest receiver. Now watch the separation as Davis climbs the pocket and gets inside, and that's just a drop. Wasn't a great throw, but you've got to catch that if you're Glenn. That's probably not the guy I would have thrown to in that situation. In two minutes. 
Minute 25 left in the half. I got to be going to Mooney or Ancalad right now. Glenn, for what it's worth, one catch, one carry all season entering today. Second and ten, another play fake. The pump, Banks, sees a man! Incomplete, Mooney soared in the air, surrounded by three different Mustangs, and played part DB. Along with Mikhail Onu soaring in the heavens. Well, we talked about these matchups. This is a good ISO look. He's running a double move, and wow, he runs right by Kevin Johnson. But this time, the safety from the other side, Mikhail Onu, has his back. And really, Mooney just missed time this jump. Now, Onu did not attack the ball in the air. And here we go, third down. Be alert for the quick game again if you're SMU. 11th play of the drive. Floats it out. Ankarad shoots it up there. Ten yeah. Shoved out of bounds inside of the ten by Onu. Well, you got to know when they get in those formations, they're going with the quick passing game. And here we go. Quick out. Throw the ball. And now you've got to make a tackle. There's those safeties again. Clements misses the tackle. And then you've got Davis also missing the tackle. And that's been the problem with this defense giving up 487 yards per game has been tackling and you saw a prime example this drive is being run to perfection by Banks 37 yards but Ankala tapped his helmet he's on the sideline from the six Banks launches out of bounds down at the one you've got to be alert for this in the red zone because Look who's blocking. You've got Cluis and Jones outside. I'll tell you what, man, that was a really good effort by number 24, Delano Robinson. Delano Robinson, excuse me. And he came out there and he almost forced a touchback. And then you lose, you get no points. Alert for the quick run out of this when they come out of this formation. Darius Bradwell, the big back. Plows ahead and bulldozes in for a touchdown. Second score. Of Mustangs on top at halftime, 27-21. An explosive first half at one point, 23 points in 32 seconds. What will come in the second? Oh, to be back in those days, rolling down a hill <laughs> can satiate your entire day. Halftime here in Dallas, senior day for SMU. Tulane needs a victory to be bowl eligible. John Sadak, Corey Chavis, our outstanding CBS Sports Network crew, including Melody Collins. What resonates for you from the first? Well, I, I just feel like the creativity of both offensive coordinators and also the chess piece that you're trying to use if your offensive coordinator, Joe Craddock for SMU, has been pretty remarkable because you've got both Trey Quinn and Cortland Sutton. And they've been having big battles with corners on the day. First half stats brought to you by Polaris Ranger. Lots of yards per completion. And unbelievable. And I, I think a lot of those yards per completion comes back to plays like this. This tight end throwback was incredible. We talked about Joe Craddock. Well, he's got Quinn in motion. He's got Cortland Sutton on a crossing route. Now Ryan Becker, one catch all season. He's going to run the tight end throwback. And watch this. There's nobody who covers him. So he's rolling out and looking at Quinn, looking at Sutton. No, I'm looking at Becker. That type of creativity is a big reason why you're getting the 18.9 yards per completion. Two picks for Ben Hicks, though, in that first. Josh Williams to handle the kickoff. He was loosening when SMU had visions of field goal right before halftime. SMU won the coin toss and wanted the ball, so Tulane has it to begin the second. And Sherman Beatty lets it bound as we check in with Melanie for more on what the head coaches had to say. Well, John Coach Morris said they'll continue to get the ball to their receivers in the second half, but with the pressure that Tulane is bringing, he wants to see his run game get going more in the second. Obviously, special teams clearly a concern for him as well. And then Coach Fritz said they've been trying to mix things up in the run game a bit, and that's why we haven't seen a ton of Hilliard. They're stacking the box, which has allowed the pass game to open up. I asked him if we might see the move into some zone coverage in the second half. He said probably not, so keep an eye on those corner wide receiver matchups. We appreciate that, Melanie. Hilliard, four carries, negative two yards. 
in the first half. Young man who entered 94 yards shy of 3,000 on his career. Banks gives it off. And the run earns a couple for Hilliard. So he's back net neutral on the day. Here's a look at the possessions for Tulane. Better showing late. Better showing late in one play drive. I mean, that's what sticks out to me on this touchdown drive, 11 seconds. We talked about chunk plays. They're probably going to have to get some more to win this game. The first two touchdowns were each in excess of 50 yards. The third score for the Green Wave, a one-yard plunge. into the flat for Ankalad. He's made plays there all day. What a stiff arm. And the yards after that contact to the 42 for 15. And you mentioned the stiff arm. If not for this effort late, I think it's by Lancaster, he might score. You don't make that tackle on the sidelines and Ankalad is off to the races. And again, this passing game under Ankalad coming off 186 yard performance is getting better. Not bad for a converted wide receiver in Cedric Lancaster. Motion here. Bit of a low snap. Banks handles it well. Banks steps up. One on one. Jump ball on Todd. Loses it. It squirts free. Physical fracas in the air with Jordan Wyatt, who creates turnovers with reckless abandon and creates an incompletion. Well, once again, no safety in the middle of the field. And you've got Ankalad with an opportunity against Wyatt because that, boy, that was a nice high point attempt by Ankalad and an excellent finish by Wyatt. Another corner who I believe is one of the better corners that you'll see on Saturday afternoons. Eight forced fumbles to go along with those 10 career picks. Hilliard. They're trying to establish their stud running back. He gets only two yards here. Justin Lawler, the stud senior defensive end, greeted him. Melanie gave the coaching perspective. What have you seen? Why has Hilliard not been allowed to earn any space? Well, it's pretty simple. I think Demrick Gary, Pono Davis, Justin Lawler, those guys inside have played tremendous today. And he's mixed it up. And I'm talking about Van Malone, three-man fronts, some four-man fronts. And don't forget about the SMU impact takes early his first time out of the half. Of Delonte Scott. A timeout called be a 30 by SMU. Timeout. DC Van Malone certainly probably part of that conversation. So SMU talks it over. Our top screw gets you up to speed on everything for the field of fantasy. It's that other free game show presented by Kubota tomorrow morning, 8 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. I love the theme music. It's been kind of chair dancing a little bit. That's where I dance best, Corey, is in the chair. And they're, trying to and they're competing with you. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of people, they're competing. We're finding the people who want to compete. Now they're winning. <laughs> they're winning. Now, Willie Fritz is an emotional, fiery guy. When he went into the press conference after the win last week against Houston, you could hear him yelling, all right, better than the last one. He wants to show that emotion on the sideline, wants to see it from his players. Let's see what they can execute on third and eight. Three-man front from SMU. Jones motions. Banks. Josh Short, what a hit. Jacob Robertson, Jr. Smash. No, the spot's going to be yeah. for the first down after the hit by Mikhail Onu. And Mikhail Onu has had a spectacular year. This is the these are the types of hits that Van Malone wants from a safety. Van Malone was a pretty good safety at Texas. He uh, one time had 23 tackles in a game, but Onu showing that even with the hit, there's Van Malone. Even with that hit, Robertson gets the first down. The bigger back, Bradwell's in along with Hilliard. Play fake. Low throw, what a grab by Mooney. And he nearly ran out of the ankle grab by Kevin Johnson. 20 yards. This is so hard to do. Watch how he's running full speed and to make a catch like that, full speed. And if not for the tackle by Johnson, you're going to keep running. I and mean, Mooney is really impressed throughout the season. 
we talk a lot about Quinn and, and Sutton. We, we got to talk about Mooney and Ankh a lot, too. They have emerged as Banks has gotten healthier. Right up the gut, slippery surface for Darius Bradwell, but it stumbles into Delonte Scott, earned him three to the 25. Corey, we've still not yet seen, perhaps down in distance, part of it, the trick plays that SMU was certain would be coming in abundance from Tulane. And if you're going to get a trick play, I wouldn't be surprised if it comes off the arm of either Ancalade or Mooney at some point. They haven't moved Ancalade a lot in terms of the triple option game in motion. Here he goes, finally. It's a crowded backfield. Banks play fake. Lobs it up. Ancalade nearly intercepted by Onu. Under through it. And Onu came up just shy of his third pick of the year. And that was excellent play design by Doug Roos in terms of being able to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup for Ankala because he brings him out of the backfield. And you can see he's behind both Johnson and Onu. And the underthrow is the only reason why you got the near interception. Ankala in the slot. Now quick slants on third and seven. A possibility in this down and distance. Safety's high. Linebackers fade back too. Three-man rush. Play fake. Banks takes off. He saw that space. And he dances for the first down to the 15-yard line. Ten yards for Banks. He reads the D. He does. And we're talking about the bank head bounce. You can see the vision. Following behind Bradwell. And then he gets outside of Davis. And he's so smooth in the open field. I think he has to be the difference in the second half with his legs. If he can get his legs going to complement what they've gotten in the passing game, it'll open up the run game. They've converted four of their last five third downs. Now in the red zone. Motion from Robertson. And the big back Bradwell smashes. Pounds out a path for about four. Tripped up by Mason Gentry and Delonte Scott. It is the option, but it's not the old-school triple option that Tulane employs. It's not. It's more of a spread option, and that's kind of what you got from Doug Roos when he was at Sam Houston State. You saw it at Georgia Southern a little bit. And their offense averaged 37.7 points a game at Georgia Southern. It works. The press fades against Robertson. Option play here for Banks. Somehow keeps the ball in his footing. How is he still up? No more. Pounded at the 15 for a loss of two by Delano Robinson. You see him getting outside, and there was an excellent effort early by Justin Lawler. That forces him to cut it back. Third down. Hilliard's in the game. When is he going to become a factor? You got Ancelot in the slot. Three down linemen. They only rush those three. Banks, one on one. Go up and get it, Darnell Mooney, touchdown! He one arm chicken winged that into his chest plate <laughs> over top of Christian Davis. 15 yards and a tie, point after pending. Well, this is a simple slant and go, and it's a double move route. You saw the pump fake by Banks, and then that was an absolute dunk. You want a slam dunk? I'm going to take this off. We're going to Duncan. <laughs> Man, that was some unbelievable catch by Mooney. The judges all flashed 10 in the dunk contest. <laughs> so Mooney's got two touchdown grabs. Big point after here. And it's good. Tulane storms back to claim the lead. Mooney, the money grab from Banks. We like puns. One point too late. <laughs> Get away. Let's take a look at today's Chick-fil-A fan cam and a special man. The oldest member of the SMU band is 28-year-old Juan Rios, an Army veteran who's in his first year with the band. And he said this week to the Dallas News that the band reminds him of the brotherhood he had in the military. It's a smaller band here. Many are in the hundreds. This band more in the dozens. But he soaks up the joy that he has with his fellow bandmates. And they play on even though SMU trails 
28-27. Tulane is stormed back to claim the lead. How will SMU respond? John Sadak, Corey Chavis, Melody Collins, our outstanding CBS Sports Network crew. I feel like, Corey, we're ready for a shootout. Yeah, well, I mean, we're already in the middle of one. And now you've got SMU, and they've got to be ready to go blazing back and forth with Banks. And who would have thought that Tulane throwing with SMU? 14 unanswered by the green wave. Horizontal to go vertical. Does it work here? Ball free! Tulane seems to pounce! Loose football, green wave! Possession inside of the 15! Braden West, running back, who, remember, had the fumble earlier in the game that was overruled on replay as the return man here. And put it on the deck. As Luke Jackson got the recovery. But it's a guy that's been making plays on special teams all year, Larry Bryant. He made plays against Cincinnati. He had, you know, basically with North Cobb High School, but this is what he's been doing most of the year on special teams, and who would have thought that it would come up now at the time you need it most, Bryant with the play. Three turnovers for SMU. This is an SMU team, plus 12 in turnover margin entering the day, sixth best in the country. They'd only lost 10 turnovers all year, three today. Bad outside, that's easy. Touchdown. Dottrell Hilliard, his 12th of the year from 14 yards out. And that is 20 unanswered points by the spread option two-lane Greenway. And that's why it was so important to get a score near the end of the half. Because now you come out in the, the second half, you score on your opening drive, and then you come back with that response on special teams to set up Hilliard. Merrick Glover nails the point after. Entering the day, SMU had lost two fumbles all year. Only Matt Campbell's Iowa State Cyclones had fewer. On the deck for a second time, and this one stands. Paid off with a touchdown by Hilliard. Thirty-five twenty-seven. Tulane with 21 unanswered points needs a win to be bowl eligible and has the lead. Let's take a look at the top 25 scoreboard brought to you by TGI Fridays. A thriller yesterday. UCF stuns USF 49 to 42. A USF team that's somehow not nationally ranked. Memphis blew out ECU. The West is wrapped up, so we know it's UCF and Memphis and the American. We also know coming up next, Boise State, Fresno State who meet today in a game that's basically moot. They'll play again in the Mountain West Championship next week. And more than likely, Boise will host that championship game regardless of what happens today. It will go by first CFP ranking, then by composite computer ranking. And a deep boot this time, a touchback, as we take a look at what Ben Hicks has mustered today, some highs and lows. Well, I mean, he got his, the one game involved earlier in terms of him to get his legs involved. Been able to find his receivers down the field. This was more of just Quinn being an excellent athlete and showing the long speed. And this was kind of a, a play late in the half where he overthrows Sutton and doesn't even give him a chance. He's got two picks today. Third time this year he's had multiple picks in the game. He's only had nine interceptions all season. On the ground, big seam and a nice spin. Another spill to the 29 for Xavier Jones. He picks up four. Taurus Chanel corrals him there. So 21 nothing outscored, putting up 21 yards since their last TD, the SMU Mustangs. And I Symmetry and numbers. Well, I think you've got to find a way to, to do what they just did. You've got to run the football. I mean, that's been one of your staples all year. And, and I think Jones has been pretty productive today. It's been almost exactly even. 20 passes, 19 rushes, but only averaging 3.4 per rush. Bat it down! What a job! Line of scrimmage. Cameron Sample 
finally back to 100% health-wise, and he swats it away. Is that a Matumbo finger wag there? <laughs> and he's getting some help from number 40, Zachary Harris. Look at him come inside with the pressure. And this team is believing that a bowl game is on the horizon. And I don't know if you can if you see more of an energy swing in the game than what we've seen over the last 10 minutes. One of four on third down, leading six for a first. Hicks running for his life. Hicks is down, flag as well. Cameron Sample again. Did he get him on the face mask? He did, and, that, and that's going to be a huge penalty and an automatic first down for SMU. And I don't think he needed to do that at all. The old time penalties by the D line derailed Tulane early. Personal foul, face mask number 55, the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Just a freshman getting so excited. Well, he doesn't have a sack all season. Now, he's had a couple of tackles for losses. He's been in, in and out of the lineup. Tremendous force by Wilson to him in proper position, contained. And you're trying to finish that sack, and you're looking for something to grab, and I think it was inadvertent. But it is what it is. It's a penalty, and, and SMU, they, they keep the drive alive. And remember, we're talking about a one-score game. That's basically a 40-yard swing. Incredible. Fourth penalty by Tulane, only one on SMU thus far. Braden West has been absent. They've gone more to single back here with Xavier Jones. Three-man front, pressure comes. They throw in that direction. What an upended hit. <laughs> it will give Jones an extra couple of yards. He'll take that Jones to the Tulane 48. Perry Nickerson, Perry Nickerson, the wrestling style the stop. And people talk about the lack of size for Nickerson. I don't think it matters because he's got heart. That was an excellent form tackle, keeping his head up, wrapping with his arms. Uh, we kind of dipped his head a little bit late, but it was still a good tackle on the perimeter. And you've got to be able to do that as a corner. Into the flat, little bobble settled, and what a tackle. Outstanding job in space by Jared Franklin, a loss of two on the swing of the flat. And it was set up by the blitz inside by Marbley. He blitzes inside, forces the hot throw. Franklin comes up. So they're in concert, setting up this third down. You wonder whether or not they're going to bring some pressure. They're bringing in Patrick Johnson, the freshman, number 34. And they may still bring some form of pressure on this down. Aruna almost offsides again. We haven't seen a lot of the big three making consistent impact for SMU. But when they have made plays, they've been significant. Only a three-man rush. They cover. What a jump on Prochet by Donnie Lewis. But he will have the first down. And Visions perhaps of trying to pick it off. Well, that was your opportunity because he tried to use a disguise to fool Hicks. And he's up in a press man look. And then he bails out. And they throw the out route. And he's got a safety over the top. But at the end of the day, Hicks is keeping this SMU drive alive. They get six. Freeman in the split backfield. They'll go to Jones. Freeman leads the way. Great low block. Raymond Epps aids as well. And they pound to the 39. Jared Franklin the stop. Five-yard pickup. That was one of the questions that you had this week was whether or not you could get two. Back. We see Jones down, but you talked about whether or not you could get more than one back on the field at a time. And we've seen them go to that today. They understand that these backs are talented. Xavier Jones has battled injury issue, got a medical redshirt last year. Played a couple of games, missed three with a hamstring, came back and hurt his shoulder the first game back against Temple. Also had shoulder issues last week. During the lightning delay, his shoulder stiffened after his 175 on the ground. And he missed the late stage when Memphis blew him away after that hour lightning delay. And I think it goes back to a theme for him. Now, a year ago in 2016, we're going to see him. I believe this. It's like it's maybe P.J. Hall that comes up and makes that stop. But he had a hamstring issue a year ago, John. And so injuries have kind of been a theme a little bit for Jones early in his career. Came in Freeman to the backfield. Has a couple of touchdown runs. Second and five. Press by the corners. 
Play fake. Hicks stumbling. Bit of a low toss, a cup grab that is good for the first down. According to some, Donnie Lewis in coverage. They're not really stretching the field, though, in the same way. No, they aren't, and I think that's because these corners are now challenging on the outside once again. That was Lewis in pretty good coverage. Sutton won at the break point. Bunch trips. Might they break out here? Stand the run with Freeman. Earns the 30, a gain of four. Arunda was part of the pile there. Here's the matchup. This has been a fantastic feast today, corners against wide receivers. <laughs> it has, and I mean, I don't think it's always about for the corners that you have an interception. Sometimes you can have good coverage, and then on the other side, some of these stats below can be misleading because Quinn got 77 of his yards against the safety. They change things up. 10th play of the drive. 32-year-old Joe Craddock, the OC, calls the plays. Hicks trying to get to lane to jump. They will not. Freeman, what up and he spins out of it. The second hit there by Zachary Harris swings him down after he picks up a yard. What a first lift, though. Well, they were bringing a, a, a blitz off the corner, and so everybody stunts down inside. And essentially, you're going to see an opportunity for I think that was Quinlan Carroll to make the play. And he misses the tackle. But you've got Harris cleaning up along with Donnie Lewis. So Jack Curtis continuing to mix up his looks. And Helmet. Think... Helmet came off there, so he does as well. Three down linemen here, third down. They bring the pressure. Hicks back side. Pump flat down. Hicks and Parks swat it away. Outstanding play by Nickerson, but what's the laundry for in the backfield? As he tried to hook up with Cortland Sutton, denied by the stellar redshirt senior corner. And it will go against SMU, it appears. A hold. They only showed three, but man, they got in there. Yeah, they showed three, but then they ended up bringing more than three. They ended up bringing six. Yo, 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 yo. Yo. Holding number 64 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Defense takes the result of the play. What down? Right tackle, Bryce Wilds. These very wide splits allow for that. They do, and most of this pressure is coming off of that side. You can see Wilds fall down. Johnson runs right over. <laughs> and so now you've got a fourth down and five. And it all comes down to Hicks making a play right here. Will they bring pressure here again? I'll play man coverage. 67% on the year entering today. Now 13 of 19 on the year with the conversion early. Braden West was fumbled twice. One was overturned on a replay in the backfield. He gets the flinch. Hicks throws wide open. Touchdown, Mustangs. James Crochet. Patrick Johnson moves. Ben Hicks knew I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Boy, did he take advantage of that look, and it was a really good throwing catch between him and Prochet. <laughs> Point after. One point game. Chad Morris told us this week the stellar corners of Tulane would open up the inside pass attack. Can't get much more open than that. Crochet, sixth score of the year. And Hicks, loving it. One point difference in Dallas, 35-34 Tulane. The road to the Final Four continues tonight, 7 Eastern, Destin, Florida. Championship game of the Emerald Coast Classic. TCU faces St. Bonaventure only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Bonnies shock the Terps. In the semifinal yesterday, Matt Mobley, outstanding. Mark Schmidt, one of the most detail-oriented head coaches in America. And Jamie Dixon, what he's done at his alma mater at TCU, incredibly impressive. Off to a brilliant start again this year. Big response from SMU. 
after fumbling on a kick return short porch touchdown for Tulane they get an 11 play 75 yard drive five minutes 21 seconds James Prochet on basically a free play with an offsides 29 yard touchdown grab Sherman Beatty lets it bound the flag is down James kick is it tough back Make it no flag as we check in with All Melody Collins downstairs. At the 25, push down. It's the SMU. After those 21 unanswered points, the SMU defense was hanging their heads. Two of these seniors, Justin Lawler and JT Williams, pulled the defense into a huddle down here, and they said, hey, come on, guys. Pick your heads up. There's a ton of football to, to be played, and it's time to rally. We're not losing this game, especially at home. So nice to see these seniors getting vocal and displaying some emotion in their final game here. Appreciate that, Melanie. And certainly emotion swells on senior day. Do you have remembrances of your senior days, Corey? <laughs> well, um, what, by senior day, the, the last game I had was actually on the road against, uh, well, I think it was against uh, LSU. Not a lot of good memories. Here's the run by Hilliard. The senior at a Baton Rouge smacks Mikhail Onu. Picks and, up about four. And to Melanie's point, the reason why they weren't good memories is that we lost the game. <laughs> you you want to win this game as a senior, and, and I think that's that's what it comes down to. College football players want to win, and look at that tackle. You think you think Onu wants to win? <laughs> he is top 20 in the country in solo tackles per game due to the form displayed there. But Tulane will take those four yards. Now on second and six. Play fake. Banks one on one. Bubbling shot. Moving. Driven out of bounds inside of the 25. Darnell Mooney, the big play target. And they attack Jordan Wyatt. And again, we're going to see all of this field wide open in the middle. And, and we're going to let it run inside. He finds it. Onu comes down. And now you've got the one on one opportunity. And I don't think they've covered Mooney all afternoon. I mean, we've seen that route be open at least five times. It's a 51 yard gain. <laughs> On the ground. And the push earns four. Five grabs, 149 yards for Mooney, and two touchdowns with multiple 50 plus yard plays. And when I talked to offensive coordinator Doug Rules about what was going on at Sam Houston State when they were so prolific with Brian Bell, that quarterback, we talked about Richard Sincere complimenting Tim Flanders. And now you're seeing the compliment of Ancalade and Mooney to Hilliard and Bradwell today. Tax keeps. It's got speed. And Onu aids him out of bounds. He gets the first down. It'll be down and goal at the nine. Well, all year long, it's been about this quarterback run game against this SMU defense. You caught it a couple of weeks ago with Malcolm Perry. And now you're seeing them again start to get a little bit soft when it comes to setting the edges. And Banks is noticing. He's mixing in enough zone read to set up those passes. And here's going to be a quick snap and run the ball. Ancalade slot left, Hilliard the bruising back. Ancalade sweeps into the backfield. Hilliard in this direction doesn't baffle them much. Does get a yard to the eight, Justin Lawler, who's been around the football to make plays, but hasn't been quite as impactful as you would have thought so far. Because they're trying to play the run. And so when you're playing that inside zone run, they're faking off of that. Lawler has inside run responsibilities. He can't just let his hair go loose and go after the quarterback. And I think that's one of the things that Doug Roos has understood as offensive coordinator, how to attack this defensive scheme. I think that might have been a ball joke at me. All touchdowns in the red zone. Banks off the hands of Mooney. He has made so many spectacular grabs today. Can still feel the burn even with the glove. Christian Davis in coverage. Once again, nobody in the middle of the field. And you're leaving these corners one-on-one -on -one with no safety help. And they've, they're going to have to cover these two lane wide receivers. This third down, you've got to have Banks' legs in play as an offensive coordinator. Don't be surprised if he finds a way to keep it on this down. Bradwell is in the bigger back. Play clock to five. Banks loading up. Banks under pressure. 
What a block. Banks. End zone incomplete. Off Ankalad's hands, he nearly hacky sacked it to himself in the end zone. Christian Davis again in coverage. Well, I don't know. I, I think you got to make that catch if you're Ankalad. I mean, I, but we'll take another look at it. But this is a tremendous effort by Banks to re-square his shoulders, and he drops this touchdown. That was a big time play to remember moving forward. The effort by Banks miraculous, and Ankalad cannot hang on as he falls down. A reluctant field goal attempt, 25 yards out. Merrick Glover, 7 of 8 on the year. The walk on. Hits it. And it gives them a four point buffer. 38 34. Tulane settles for three. Tulane has to settle for a field goal. Had first down and goal from the nine. Could not punch it in. The chip shot 25 yards out by Merrick Glover. Tulane 38. SMU 34. Jonathan Banks getting tended to by the athletic training staff. The Tulane program won four conference games in its first three years as a member of the American Athletic Conference. A win today. Not only is Tulane Bowl eligible for the first time since 2013, they would get their fourth conference win of this season. They would match their first three years combined. That's what Willie Fritz can do, turning around programs. He's done it at multiple stops at multiple levels. They want SMU to return to this one. Put it on the ground earlier. Not the case here for Kevin Johnson as we take a look at some of the mistakes today. Well, this interception by Nicholson was kind of just a throwaway. Robledo misses an extra point. That can still come back to be a factor. They'd be down by three if he had And then Larry Bryant makes a tremendous strip. We get a recovery by Luke Jackson, and the three turnovers by SMU have been huge. It's the first game all season with three turnovers, and so far, that's the difference. Epps shifts to the right side, Freeman to the backfield, Sutton motions. Hicks, blocks left side, has to check it down. Hicks fleeing. Wisely eventually throws it away. That ultra competitor in him would not allow him to release it as we go downstairs to Melanie. Because they're going to miss on the offensive line. They called him the glue that holds this line together, and he's a likely candidate for the team's Ironman award at the end of the year. As long as he plays in the bowl game, he will have started 49 games. And Coach Craddock said he's never seen him in a yellow jersey because of an injury. He's never had him as practice. He always comes to work every single day, and the entire offensive line feeds off Evan Brown. Evan Brown, who was recruited at Clemson, and Chad Morris and Joe Craddock were there. Fingers pointed by Tulane as the flag flutters. False start, number 64 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Second SMU penalty goes on the right tackle, Bryce Wilds. But Evan Brown, according to Joe Craddock, didn't quite have the size. They wondered if he could play in the ACC. He now admits in retrospect, sometimes as coaches, we do a poor job evaluating measurables versus football ability. That was a swing and a miss. No, A.Q. Shipley, not a big man, but a pretty good center in the NFL. He was another guy that people questioned because of the size. And I think Evan Brown, he'll get a shot and some looks from NFL teams as a center. Now Hicks got a shot on that left forearm. He's been clutching at it in the last 30 seconds. Three-man rush. Hicks the pump. Slides down. And by the way, I think Matthew Kushner and Melanie Collins like that Penn State reference. But that hit by Barge. That's the end of the third quarter. Man, that was something else. So we are through three quarters of play. A 38-34 Tulane lead. Hicks a little banged up. He'll gut it out. College football presented by the Home Depot. We have had so many thrillers in the American Athletic Conference this year. And how fired up are those 12 seniors plus for Tulane on the precipice of bowl eligibility. Temple has a 2-9 Tulsa team. The Owls can become bowl eligible. Tulane tried to become bowl eligible by besting a six-win SMU squad. Third down at 14. Hicks has a pick on third and 15 earlier in the game. One of his two. 
He doesn't need to panic right now. He needs to just take what the defense gives him. Pressure comes. Hicks slings it. Tumbling grab. Made clean for a first by Cortland Sutton. Well, this is what they call a spin dead combination. You get Proche spinning out and him running the square in. And they get the matchup with Chanel at the top of the screen. And that's going to be a mismatch. And that's why they actually spin and switch the receiver's responsibilities to get the receiver against the safety. Sutton, who was a tight end in high school, most recruited him as a safety. 17 yards on that grab. From the 42, SMU. Into the flat. A shake for Freeman. Earns a few back to the 40, but Luke Jackson swallows him up. That's a loss of two Luke still. Jackson, the, tackle. the swing looks haven't produced a whole lot. Well, they're, they're, their linebackers are very versatile in terms of their range. And Luke Jackson, you don't know what he's going to do snap to snap. Sometimes Jackson will actually line up uh, in a rush position, and then sometimes he'll line up in a linebacker position. So you don't know whether or not he's going to be a linebacker or a defensive end. Kind of like playing trivia with Corey Chavis. <laughs> Second and 12. I lost. Bang it outside. More lost yardage. No! Pass for a blocker, and the turf monster trips him up. But he gets to the 37, somehow a gain of three when Xavier Jones was dead to rights to lose a half dozen. Well, if you're a day of ruin, and these are the plays you've got to be able to make to catch the attention of your teammates. And then Harris loses the container, if not for a great effort by Donnie Lewis. Lewis comes up, and he actually takes on personally pulling around. And that's the only reason now we're looking at a third down and nine. Let's show him near side. They've got Donnie Lewis there. He's got a matchup at the bottom of the screen against Jalen Monroe. They don't bring the blitz. And Hicks still under duress. Throwing on the run. Incomplete nearly intercepted. And that was a much better job that time, John, between Zachary Harris and also number 55, Cameron Sample. And it looks like that's Nickerson that's down. That is Tulane's best cover corner. Is he their best player? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, there's, there's, there could be an argument, but at the end of the day, he's a player that when they lost him a year ago, that's when the bowl hopes subsided because they had a chance a year ago as well. And he got hurt against Houston, and that was tough. So he's banged up on the sideline. Second punt of the day for SMU. Jamie Sackville averages 41 per. Jacob Robertson only averages six per return. Gets it off without great distance. Excellent hand, though. Favorable down to the 29 and rolls inside of the 20. So the ground friendly to the SMU bounce. But Tulane, after that 39-yard punt with a four-point lead, tries to make it a two-score game. Here are today's Geico difference makers. Darnell Mooney, a pair of touchdowns, nearly 150 yards, two grabs of 50-plus. He's been a star for Tulane. And Ben Hicks, it's been some up and down, but Hicks has been largely accurate outside of those costly picks. Yeah, he has, and I think Hicks has become a better football player as a sophomore. Anytime you go over the 30 touchdown pass mark, that says enough. Big drive, though, for Banks, who I think uh, may be having his best game in the year so far. Motion by Glenn. Keeper by Banks. And he shifts to the 25 as we check in with Melanie. And Banks, the tighter the situation gets, the more the competitor comes out in him. And we saw that in the game against Houston. And that's a trait these coaches saw in him coming out of junior college. He's a competitor, and he's going to will himself to find a way to make it happen when he needs to. And he said regardless of the corrections he needs to make to his game at times, you can't coach competitiveness. And they feel very fortunate that he has that gene. Well, thank you, Melanie. Certainly shows that great. It's been a long path to arrive at Tulane, a quarterback. On second down, he'll keep again. He's got a block. 
What a job by Akalad and some help on the edge as well by Robertson. He darts out of bounds. That'll move the chains. Christian Davis closest to it. Well, I think one word that Melanie talked about was grit. And if you've got grit, then you'll take the game over and want it in this time in terms of a runner. You know, some of these zone reads, he could be handing it off. He's saying, you know what, I'm going to run it. And I think some of it is just him just reading the defense, and some of it is just, I'm going to make a play. Shades of what Quinton Flowers did nearly oh! willing USF to victory yesterday. Bradwell gets stumbled shy of the 32 by Rodney Clements. Here's Banks' performance so far. Well, this is part of the lens that we've talked about. The ability to make people miss. Switches the ball to the outside lane. This a pass over the middle to Mooney. And boy, here's another great pass. This to Mooney again. Both of those ended up as touchdowns. The numbers on the stanza on collide motion. Banks again. What blocks! And what a tackle. Mikhail Onu got a paw up from the ground, his belly on the turf, and tripped him up to hold him to nine. Well, that's just a simple zone read. Now, he's reading off of your edge defender. And, and look at those blocks. We talked about Ankalad and a blocker that he was. He cut, I mean, you've got two or three SMU defenders, defensive backs on the ground. These blockers, wide receivers, can really block for Tulane. Changing up the tempo a bit, play fake. Banks launches, Akhalad, incomplete. Jordan Wyatt swept in underneath and perhaps timed the jump a little better than the wide receiver there. He did, and uh, I think if you're on Akhalad, you've got to find a way to stop your momentum and go back into the defensive back. Now, you can see him run the post. He crosses the face of Wyatt. Excellent speed turn by Wyatt, and then Wyatt times his lead. Wyatt is a technician. He's very, very good in terms of finding the ball down the field. Wyatt, the turnover machine. Four picks, three forced fumbles. The SMU record with five career defensive scores. On second and ten, they overplay for Banks, and that opens it up for Hilliard, who erupts into SMU territory, slashing to the 44. He thundered over Onu and Kevin Johnson for 14. Boy, you called it. They really overplayed to the outside, thinking that Banks was going to keep it. And he hands it off inside. And now they've got this SMU defense on their heels. Don't forget, Memphis last week, 333 rush yards they gave up. The game you did against Navy, what was it, 559? Luigi was on that board. <laughs> Not sure if a turtle shell might be employed here. <laughs> Banks keeps this time. They read it, and he's chipped down. Negative play thanks to Kyron Mitchell. Van Malone, the D.C., told us that Mitchell is one of their most dynamic blitzers and one of their most instinctive defenders. Well, he beat two blockers on that play. You've got two guys that are coming out. You're going to see him try to kick out. Look at him beat that block. I think that was by either Artuan or Charles Jones the second. And he's on his face, and, and Mitchell's making the stop. And that was probably the first time we've seen a really big negative play against this two-lane offense. How do they respond? Minus nine for second and 19. Play fake. Backs over the middle. Yeah, John, John LeBlue. Yeah. I can't, but that was a great effort by LeBlue. I couldn't believe it. How did the right tackle get that far downfield? Well, he's a good football player. That was another one of those hits by Odu. Moving on the field, Boy. Catch. fumbled, recovered by the offense. That actually worked out as a positive now. It's fourth down and one, and I don't even know if they would have gotten that much if he had just kept the ball. Third down and one, I'm sorry. So they pick up 17 on a catch that was fumbled and recovered by the right tackle. What defensive deluge for Dottrell Hilliard. It's Onu 
who leads the way, and he's still enjoying his turkey feast, it seems. <laughs> well, it's Thanksgiving for old new, and he's had one heck of a game. Now, he's had some things or issues in coverage, but he's tackled extremely well, physical all day, and he's laid punishment to these receivers, now extending to the running backs. And you know Willie Prince, if it's fourth down, he's going to go for it. I think this is their bowl game on the line right here. Looks like we might get a timeout first. A drive that's already soaked on up about five minutes. Onu brings out the athletic training staff, clutching at his head. Let's take a look. Fourth down here. Hot, hot. It is hot, very hot. Yeah, it's hot here. Yeah. I agree, Michael Roche. <laughs> And there's no new. Wow, you're getting a, we're getting a little bit of the volume from down on the field, but oh no, I think is that a just a helmet malfunction or something? Continues to clutch at his head as he jogs off. He comes from great legacy. His cousins include Quandre Diggs with the Lions, Quentin Jammer, longtime corner with the Chargers. And Van Balone told us that the way they have their defensive system designed, it's designed for Onu because of his position to lead them in tackles. Entered with 83 on the year. And it's because he plays to the short side of the field. And we'll show it when we go back to the field level angle. He plays to the boundary side of the field. You've got a field side and a boundary side. And Onu is normally aligned to that boundary side of the field. His absence make an impact here on fourth down? Well, I think it can. I, I think ultimately you've got to be able to find that matchup. And, uh, and I'm thinking if you're looking for the matchup, it's over here. Let's see if they run it that way. Play fake. Banks. Knocked down and sacked. Dropped at his own 49-yard line. And Justin Lawler, the senior on senior day, makes his biggest impact play a 14-yard loss. The American Athletic Conference leader in sacks and tackles for loss saves some of his best for last. A big play of the fourth Mustang ball. Up next, 23rd ranked Boise State looks to finish the year perfect in conference play. The Broncos visit Fresno State, a preview of the Mountain West Championship game. And at 9 Eastern, BYU invades Hawaii right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Back to his alma mater, Jeff Tedford, the best turnaround in America for Fresno State. The Bulldogs were arguably the worst team in the FBS last year. They have a chance to win the Mountain West. Yeah, I don't know if you can, you've seen too many turnarounds that match what they've been able to do, and man, Michael Onu walking off the field, that has to be a concern for SMU. Going back to the locker room. So from midfield, Cameron Freeman, big head of steam, pummels to the 43 to pick up seven. And is this where the Mustang rung attack can emerge? and allow that over-the-top pass game that's been largely nullified in the last two-plus quarters. It has. I, I think you make a good point about the run game getting something going. That sets up your play-action pass. Oh, Freeman spins off the first hit. Pirouettes for a first to the 39. Gains four. Rajon Barbley part of the pair to smack him there along with Quinlan Carroll. Well, first and ten, relative ease on these first couple of plays for the Mustangs. That is a loaded backfield. With pistol depth for Hicks. On the ground. And the shoulder shake baffled Chanel. To the 35 for about four. Ade Aruna in there as well. And I think time becomes a little bit of a... Uh, 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 just an issue for both teams. You're starting to look at the clock a little bit. You have to understand how the other team has moved the ball. And so I, I think the run game by SMU, I think it's a good strategy here to maybe try to set up that play action pass you were talking about. Sutton has Nickerson bottom of the screen and press. Freeman carries a green wave man to the 30-yard line. They'll be a yard short. Zachary Harris was on his back for the ride. When they're actually bringing a run stunt inside, and 
Look at the finish by Will Hopkins, the Oregon State transfer, as a blocker. And that was one of the reasons why he took that ride. Hopkins continues to run his feet. Big package in here for Tulane. Motion by Mitchell Kaufman, double tight, needing a yard. Freeman spins off the first hit. This will depend upon the spot. It looks like he's got it. And they're going to move the chains without measurement a little more than a yard. That's a big first down conversion. This is the most consistency we have yeah. seen from SMU offensively in a while. It really is. And, and the one thing that I'm kind of going to be monitoring the rest of the game is that timeout that they used a little bit earlier. Uh, because with two timeouts left, remember, they're still trailing. And, and getting a score right now is imperative. Freeman sidecar in the backfield. Three down line and edge pressure. And a whistle before the snap. Delay a game. Delay a game on the offense. It's a five yard penalty. First half. You can't have that mistake if you're Hicks. I mean, not at this juncture of the game. You're closing in on the four minute mark. You don't want to get into a situation where you, you're really just having to fight against the chains. And they were starting, like you said, beginning to get some positive momentum. Big bodies out there, including Ryan Becker, who's got a touchdown grab. Freeman in the backfield. Only 62 yards in the air this half. Back to the ground for Freeman. And he keeps turning those legs, powers a path to the 30. Gain of four, it'll be second and 11. Yay or nay on this volume of runs from SMU? It, do they have to do this? Well, I like it. I think, I think what they've started to see is that we're having problems stopping the Tulane offensive attack and so we need to slow the game down regardless of our weapons and the one thing about Tulane's rush defense it has not been good all year they're 117th in the in the country against the run you've got to challenge them on the ground they go empty Hicks dangerous pass and he connects Trey Quinn on the quick slam got inside of Jared Franklin and Hicks with a BB right on the hands That's a gain of 10. It'll have them a yard shy. Good read by Hicks. Franklin playing outside leverage, giving up the inside off the snap. And you got to suspect right here, they're going to go to their short yardage stud, Freeman, to pick up this first down or attempt to. You call the partner, and Freeman's got it. Finally felled by Rajon Marbley, who refused to yield that right leg. He's got the 16 to the first gate of four. And they're following behind Mitchell Kaufman, who's been a really good blocker for them all season, number 24. They do an excellent job on the outside of just finishing some blocks. Chad personally over there, he's had a pretty good afternoon. Now you've got a lot of options as we are nearing the two minute mark. Two touchdowns in three trips to the red zone, entering this one. Freeman stumbles, and that's going to cost SMU a couple of yards to the 18. Ande Aruna. Tulane takes its second timeout of the half. It's a full timeout. Good call. Ah, it's his second timeout of the half. That was a little confusing. Was that their, I thought that was their first. 38-34. Let's take a look at today's Bud Light game summary. Three turnovers for SMU, critical. Yeah, they have been. I think that's, again, we, we mentioned that that was the difference in the game, John, and now this is touchdown or bust if you're SMU because, remember, you're behind, and that's the reason why Tulane called a timeout. If you do score, they want to have some time to come back or at least have an opportunity to come back and get the ball back. And correction, Michael Rocha, referee, was incorrect. That was Tulane's first call timeout. Green Wave still with two left. Second down. Freeman. And again, Marbley arrives along with Aruna. Drops him at the 19. Loss of a yard. Third and 13 on senior day. 
Tulane because of what you said. Timeout and a half. As Tulane calls another yeah. timeout, this is four down territory no matter what, right? It is. And It'll it, be a 30 second timeout. Now, now you know they're going to throw on this down, so you're going to have one timeout left because uh, uh, now if they complete it and they get a first down, <laughs> you're going to have to wonder when you use that timeout if they don't score. But remember, for them to get a first down, it would be at the six yard line. These teams are familiar with tight finishes. New Orleans last year down to the wire. Taron Ancalot had two TDs. Tulane led by 10 in the fourth. But SMU roared back. Braden West, who had the fumble today, he scored from one yard out with 116 left. A comeback 35-31. SMU triumph. Now Tulane in this game at one point scored 21 unanswered to take the lead. And Willie Fritz trying to cap off another massive second year turnaround. Well, one of these corners has to step up now. You know they're going to be going to some. You've got Sutton inside in the slot right here. Nine rushes through the first 10 plays of the drive. Here's the second pass. Hicks. It's all. Touchdown. Trey Quinn. His second of the day as he drops the hammer from 19. They went all the way back to a play from UConn early in the season. It's a post corner post, and he threads a double team. And that was Lewis who they moved to match up on him, and it still didn't work. Critical point after from Josh Williams. Not automatic, but it's good. And it's a field goal difference. Trey Quinn's second TD of the game. It slingshots SMU back in the lead, up a field goal. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. By Verizon, the best network and the best unlimited. And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reese's Perfect. Many thanks to our outstanding crew. Matt Kushner, hello. Wave. Say hi. Mom and Dad are watching. 41-38. <laughs> SMU on top. Tulane surged ahead 28-27 at the 9-27 mark in the third. SMU has its first lead since, thanks to the LSU transfer, Trey Quinn's second touchdown of the game. 41-30 at Tulane Drive in a march for a bowl berth starts from the 27. Well, the last touchdown they had Donnie Lewis at the corner and they're running a bracket on Trey Quinn. And watch the route he runs. Post, corner, post, and he beats the double team. So they move their starting corner inside. They double team him with Roderick Teamer, and he beats both of them inside with a post, corner, post that they pull from the UConn game earlier in the season. So give offensive coordinator Joe Craddock credit for going into his, I don't know, I guess it would be his library to pull out an old play. Could Tulane pull out a trick play? We've not seen one today. Dontrell Hilliard in the backfield. One timeout from the 27, under two minutes. Banks throws it to nobody, sideline out of bounds. The be, SMU sideline going yeah. nuts, believing intentional grounding. It may be. There is no foul for grounding on the play. The quarterback was outside of the tackle box, and the ball went beyond the line of scrimmage. Well, let's see. This is the tackle box. Let's see if he gets outside of it barely. He gets right outside of that left, right tackle, John McGlue. And they got away with one on that one, I believe. SMU has brought sensational pressure against Banks, stifling Tulane the last couple of possessions. On second down, on Kalad, wisely gets out of bounds with aid from Jordan Wyatt. And you got 146 left, so if your banks, don't be afraid to run the football. You've got time to run it. You've got to be thinking, pick up the first down. He has to quit floating backwards in the pocket versus pressure. He has to go forward, John, if they're going to win this game. Third down and two, it's something that Willie Fritz spoke about in the infancy of the season, praising Banks for his ability to run and throw, but said they need him to climb the pocket. And a first down run, that'll stop the clock. Elijah McQueen, part of the contact on Hilliard. 
and I think that the range of this kicker, and I talked with Melanie about it before the game, I think his, his range is very questionable, Merrick Glover. Bit of a low snap, Banks on the pump, slips through the hit. Banks, what effort! And depending upon the spot, he might have the first down here. This is a critical spot. Will it stop the clock? Yes, they're going to move the chains. Well, Mason was, Gentry, the stop. That was unbelievable. I mean, uh, you're talking about a magician in the pocket. Delonte Scott, no chance at me. And then I'm going to take the hit. Banks is putting on the show on this potential game with a drop. One timeout. Another great move. Charles Jones, the second, dances out of bounds. We showed Merrick Glover. His long is 37 yards, which means getting to the 20 to match that. Kobe Neenan, a three-star recruit, was the kicker start of the year. And Willie Fritz told us before game two of the season, he'd be comfortable 50 and in. But Glover has handled the duties most of the campaign. Second down. Banks, open target. Another first, hooks up with Jacob Robertson Jr. They are carving up SMU, dinking and dunking. And the sidelines, you can feel their energy as Banks continues to make a play. They remember the Army game where he came all the way down the field and on the final drive won the game with a touchdown run. Eerily similar so far this drive. They've been attacking Elijah McQueen, who's filling in for Mikhail Onu. Last we heard, he was taken to the locker room, helmet off. But the 37, pressure. backside pressure! Banks throws it! Incomplete! Christian Davis. And there's a flag down on that one, and I don't know exactly where's that flag come from. Long dialogue here, referee Michael Roche, critical call. Ineligible downfield. Ineligible downfield, number 89 of the offense was covered and went downfield on the pass. Be five yard penalty, repeat first down. Willie Fritz vociferously disagrees. Kendall Ardwan. Well, I think, yeah, well, I don't know if that was. The head linesman on that side made that call at about the 43 yard line, and I guess he's saying that that receiver was not off the ball. First and 15, 54 seconds, one timeout. Thanks. Lobs it. And get it. Darnell Mooney has wow. been left prone all day, <laughs> wow. and their smallest receiver keeps on taking wallop contact, rides on the ground as he held on. Elijah McQueen smashed him. What a play by Jonathan Banks. And Mooney rises to the occasion right along with them before getting injured. But that was just absolutely spectacular. Now, you've got Lawler coming off the edge. He feels that. Now he rolls to his right. You don't want to throw back across your body. Some kind of way he finds it in front of McQueen. Jordan Wyatt is down as well. Looks like he might have gotten his leg caught up. But you know, both guys are OK. That's a big injury to lose Wyatt. He can't even put any pressure, I believe, on that leg. The Wyatt grimacing significantly. The man who provides offense on defense. Remember, seemingly, they're already down to Mikhail Onu. Starting safety. Wyatt is their turnover manufacturing quarterback. And it's been in the air, understandably, thanks to time and position and score, that Tulane has taken plumb advantage against the second wave. And I tell you what, I think you, you bring up something. The turnover machine. Where they're already down, I believe, Eric Sutton, number one. So I don't know if he's going to come in the game here or not. They're going to go to Justin Guy Robinson, number 29, their freshman who actually plays a little bit on their kickoff team. And you got to be looking at Robinson and on that side of your banks. And they're in field goal range, by the way, for Glover now. But I'm thinking touchdown of your offensive coordinator, Doug Roos. Well, Willie Fritz seems to much prefer to earn it with his offense and not the kicking game. 46 seconds that feels abundant with a timeout and prime position. But can they shield the ball? A two lane team that rarely gives it away. Only 10 lost on the year entering today. Backs. A Broncard. First and goal. 
all the way to the five. Elijah McQueen again in coverage, 18 yards. They keep attacking the freshman safety. And they're attacking the middle of the field. And now if you're SMU, be alert for Banks' legs at all times. And the quarterback draw is in effect. Bit of a low snap. Banks ends up incomplete. Flag down. Mooney got hammered as the ball arrived. Christian Davis was there. Pass interference, number 29 of the defense. Because the foul curl begins on the ball, we place at the two yard line. First down. Justin Guy Robinson, freshman corner. We just talked about him coming into the game. You needed to attack him. And that's exactly what Banks does. I thought it was a bad call on Guy Robinson, but if you're Banks, you're playing like a veteran. You're finding the matchup when Wyatt goes out of the game. And again, you gotta be alert for the zone read right now in Banks. First and goal. Banks. End zone. Oh, oh. Wide open. Darnell Mooney and Banks off target. He can't believe it. You don't want to waste downs at this point and think you're going to get another shot. I know Mooney can't believe that. This is an excellent play design. It's a reverse pivot route, and you couldn't have drawn it up any better of your offensive coordinator, Doug Roos, and you know that that was the bowl game off his fingertips. Green Wave entered at five and six, seeking bowl eligibility for the first time since 2013. Jones motions. Banks on the corner. Turn it up. And he's down. Banks denied at the two. Clock rolls at 13. Now it freezes. Final timeout will be called. Tulane takes its final timeout of the half. It's a full timeout. So what's reasonable here? Now it's third and goal, but no timeouts. Well, you got to be, you can't think like he was thinking on that play. He knew he had the timeout in his back pocket so he could run. You can't run now. You get tackled now, the game is over. So you're going to have to, if you run it, you're going to have to die for the pylon. I think the, the big play that's always worked for them has been the quick slants. And that's something they've gone to, and they've done it out of a twin formation, two receivers to each side. We'll see if they want to spread them out, and potentially also spreading them out could open up the run game. If you do want to take a chance running it, maybe you surprise them with Hilliard. Tulane's football history, not the grandest. Five winning seasons in the last 35 years. One in the last 15 years. But a chance to get a sixth victory, become bowl eligible, and with a bowl win, have a winning campaign. What a turnaround it would be under the second-year head coach, Willie Fritz. Out of timeouts. Third and goal. And I think you got to sprint it out. I don't know if you want to take the risk of running it and getting tackled. I think you got to try to sprint this out to your right side. If you're going to do a zone read, it's going to have to come with Banks running over to the left side. But otherwise, sprint out to your right. Banks, end zone, incomplete, fall down. Nine seconds, looking for Charles Jones the second. Rodney Clemens was in coverage, and it will be interference against SMU. Pass interference, number eight of the defense. While we place half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. So it goes on Rodney Clemens. Yes, you get the first down, but time is slim. It is, and I think now you've got to be thinking about, okay, we want to have a preserve two more passes, at least two more shots. You don't want to waste time scrambling if your bank's right here. you got to get the ball out quickly so you can preserve yourself another down. And we might get a timeout here from SMU. I think that's a good timeout SMU by Van SMU takes its second timeout of the half. So the Mustangs have the only timeout left in this game. Nine seconds. A shootout here in Dallas, Texas. And there's Van Malone in the NFL with the Lions. A safety in Texas. Years coaching on the sideline, striving for consistency tackling and down some of his stars. We haven't seen Mikhail Onu in some time. Jordan Wyatt put no weight on his right foot as he limped off to the sidelines. A lot of freshmen are out there in the secondary. Well, I mean, if I'm... Uh, Jonathan Banks, I'm going after Justin Guy Robinson again. You picked up the, the, the flag earlier when you threw 
the slant route to Mooney, I believe it was. He picked up a flag, and I think you've got to go back at him. He's just coming to the game, and you know that he's not even really warm. So that's a guy that I would attack, and I think they're going to bring both of their receivers to that side. Ankala's going to that side where Justin Guy Robinson is at. And that's up here at the top of the screen. Field goal game, but Tulane wants to win it now. Jones motions. Banks turns it up. Banks down short. He is down a half yard shy. Kyron Mitchell. Time rolling. Zeros arrive. Fireworks explode. And on senior day, SMU hangs on. 41 38. Snapping a three game skid. Our officials are now ordering both teams off the field, declaring this might not be over. And I, I, I we'll see what he has to say right here, but. <laughs> Got to take a look to see if he's in. I think that might be a touchdown. I, I think they're going to have to take another look at it. And let's see where his right knee comes down at. Remember, he only has to break the plane of the white. Yeah, no, it's a touchdown. I think that's a touchdown. I think they got to go back and review this. And if they review it upstairs, I think that's a touchdown. And Tulane, that's a touchdown. And Tulane is seeing it on the big board. That is a touchdown. And they have their hands collectively in the air, screaming touchdown. And that's a bowl game for Willie Fritz and this Tulane Green Wave. And you can see the change of emotion. And we talked about Banks running the football down there. We just didn't think he would. If you're going to go for it, at this point, with no timeouts, you got to die for it. He did that. He runs over Kyron Mitchell for, I believe, the game-winning touchdown, John. A game literally of inches. Agony and ecstasy hang in the balance for both sidelines. And remember, the Army game, when it came down to fourth down and they had to win it, he put it on his back. Melanie Collins talked about the grit that he needed. He has it. The coaches talked about it. You can't recruit that grit. This is the game on the line. He decides, I'm going to put it in my hands our season, and I think, he's I think he's taking them to a bowl game with that run. It's under review. The call on the field is that he was down short of the end zone, denied as time expired. Willie Fritz has never had back-to-back -back losing seasons. That hangs in the balance. But moreover, a chance for a statement victory that would propel his program to a bowl berth for the first time since 2013. And I want to say one more thing. If, the, if From what I've seen, the angles that our crew has shown, I don't see how you cannot say that this is a touchdown. I didn't see any uh, uh, other. Only reason why is because they, on the field they said it wasn't a touchdown. That would be the only reason why that that would be considered the call and the game would be over. This game decided by replay official Paul Zukas, who has the tough task of deciding. Did Tulane just plunge ahead? Or was he short and did SMU snap a three game skid? Here's the call. Michael Roche, the game. After review, the ruling on the field stands. That'll be the end of the game. A call that will be held in grand dispute by Tulane fans forevermore, but celebrated by SMU. The Mustangs hold on by a hair on their chinny chin chin. It goes to replay. Banks short by an eyelash. And SMU has a seventh victory in a winning regular season. It comes down to those smallest of moments and a bit of a gamble. They had a chance to throw multiple times, but said, put it on the ground with Banks. Well, we knew that would be the, the tough decision. If you're going to take it into your hands and put the season on your back, and, and I, again, I, and from that angle, I don't see how that's not a touchdown. Now, again, it, it's, his, it's his left elbow down right there. I don't think they could see from that angle, and that's why they could not overturn the call. And I, some some might criticize, why not kick the field goal there? I think it's the right call to go for the touchdown. Well, I, I think they had some confidence issues with the field goal kicker. I mean, you want, do you want to take it into overtime? They were thinking about, we're going to try to win this game and go to bowl game and that's exactly what Banks did and he came up a little bit short. Kyron Mitchell is there for the stop that saves the end of the season as we go downstairs to Melody Collins with a jubilant group of Mustangs.
Thanks, guys. Coach, congratulations. What an ending. A bit controversial there. What did you see on that final play? Well, you know what? I mean, it could have went either way. I mean, I, obviously, two teams that are just fought hard. You know, I, I had soft to Tulane, and what Coach Fritz has done to that program in two years. I'm, you know, a heck of a game. We knew it would be. They were coming in trying to battle for a bowl. But, man, so proud of our guys. Uh, just, just the fight that our guys had, you know, to be able to come back and, and uh, win this thing in the fourth quarter is really what we're all about. And a big stand right there was huge. So, uh, man, to be seven wins, seven and five right now from where we were two years ago. Send these seniors out with a win tonight and uh, a guaranteed winning record, first time since 19, or fifth time since 1986. And, you know, best home record since 1982. It's, it's been a special year, and I'm really proud of uh, this kind of a fitting ending right there. Holy cow. Coach, talk about this senior class a bit. Justin Lawler, Cortland Sutton, what do these guys mean to you in this program? They were here for that one win season. Yeah, you know what? It's just the fight that these guys have. I mean, when so many just would have chosen to give up and get out of it, you know, the hard work ahead was just uh, so special to see these guys be able to turn this program around and get to a bowl like they have. And uh, I'm just so proud of them. It's a great day. Thanks so much, Coach. How will you celebrate this win with your team? I don't know. I mean, we're going we're gonna to dance and have a good time, but I'm just so proud of these guys and the fight they have. Appreciate the time, Coach. Enjoy Thank it with you. your players. Thank you. We thank you so much, and I'm not sure they have the legs to be able to dance. Cortland Sutton, an emotional <laughs> embrace, likely NFL bound, and the emotions flow out. Joe Craddock said that he teared up quite a bit thinking about the goodbyes to the special senior class and certainly Melanie told the story of Justin Lawler and the gift daughter to daughter father to father. There's a lot of grand emotion on this day and a game that came down to the final play. And I, I think that's a play you heard Chad Moore say could get on either way. <laughs> I think Tulane fans will hold that in significant dispute but. That's a, a tough call to make right on the doorstep there as we take a look at the numbers. I don't think you could have a more evenly matched game, John. I mean, these two teams were just tremendous. Their competitiveness came all the way down to the final yard, as you mentioned. And the passing attack for Tulane really stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with a very explosive passing attack for SMU. 963 total yards. We go down to Melanie with Cortland Sutton. Well, Cortland, I can see you're incredibly emotional. It's your senior day. What did it mean to you to get this win at home? Man, it means a lot, not only to myself, but to the rest of the seniors and to this team. Man, we put a lot into this season, and, and we know we came up short on the conference championship, but we knew that we needed to finish things strong here at, at Ford and, and send the rest of the seniors out, send the seniors out with a, with a win and, and, and do it in that type of fashion where it comes down to the last play. That's something that everyone will remember, everyone attending this game, all the seniors. Years, everyone that played in this game, everybody's going to remember this for the rest of their lives. And this, that's something that, you know, everybody dreams of, just being able to have a game that they remember forever. Portland, thanks so much. We look forward to seeing you at the next level. Thank you so much. You guys. Appreciate that, Melanie. Joe Craddock said this week, Cortland Sutton was the kind of guy you want your daughter to marry. His voice cracked as he emoted about his redshirt junior star who had a chance to go high in the NFL draft last year, decided to come back, get his degree, and wanted to accomplish things on the field. And as he mentioned, they don't get that conference title, but they do have a seven-win season, and they end things on a good note. And they still have a bowl game, and he has a chance to further uh, maybe solidify his status. Last season, he had high second-round grades, and I think this year a lot of scouts have given him first-round grades. So a lot to be happy for him, and certainly for this SMU football team after what I think is a very controversial call. Jonathan Banks silenced by Kyron Mitchell right on the doorstep. What a stop. That'll wrap things up for Corey Chavis, Melody Collins, and our talented CBS crew. I'm John Sadak. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now to Fresno, Rich Waltz, Jay Feely, Jenny Dell. It's Boise State, Fresno State.